Base Felix Mantilla, batting seventh and playing right field, Gus Bell. Catching and batting eighth, Hobie Landreth. And pitching for the Mets tonight, Roger Craig, a right-hander. Now, in just a moment, we'll give you the Milwaukee starting lineup. But first, what's your idea of a wonderful day? An excursion in the suburbs, a day on the sound, a trip to a lake, or maybe that long journey into your own backyard with your portable radio? Well, no matter which, any day becomes a little bit more wonderful when you have refreshing Rheingold beer on hand. Yes, Rheingold is something special when it comes to beer, and dry tells you why. Rheingold's way of brewing is long, slow, and costly, but you can measure the difference in taste. Rheingold is beer as beer should taste, brisk and bright and clean clear through. And isn't that the way you want your beer to be? Sure, so make Rheingold your beer. Join the millions who say... My beer is Rheingold, the dry beer. Find out for yourself why Rheingold is New York's largest selling beer. Have a glass right now, along with the game. The hand you hear here is for Casey Single, as he is on his way to the plate with the lineup cards. And he acknowledges the round of applause that he is accorded here at Milwaukee County Stadium. Casey Single, number 37. Now here is the lineup and batting order for the Milwaukee Braves. Leading off tonight and playing left field, Howie Bedell, B-E-D-E-L-L. Batting second and playing shortstop, Roy McMillan. Batting third and playing right field, Mac Jones. Batting fourth and playing first base tonight for the first time in his entire baseball career, Eddie Matthews. Batting fifth and playing center field, Henry Aaron. He is followed by catcher Joe Torrey. Batting seventh and playing second base, Frank Bowling. Batting eighth and playing third base tonight, Dennis Menke. And the pitcher is Warren Spahn, the ageless left-hander of the Milwaukee Braves who will be trying tonight for the 313th victory of his Major League career. The umpires now are at the plate, along with Coach Billy Adair of the Milwaukee Braves, who is up there to represent manager Bertie Tebbets and manager Casey Stingle of the New York Mets. The umpires tonight at the plate, Ed Sudall, at first base, Al Foreman, at second, Tom Gorman, and around at third, Bill Jakowski. So they go over the ground rules, particular to County Stadium here. As the Milwaukee Braves have taken the field. And there is a uh, huge new scoreboard located out in right field. It's new this season at Milwaukee's County Stadium. With all sorts of information, including a section for a phanogram that is... Uh, Spelled out in lights, and it says, Milwaukee welcomes an old friend, Casey, and his New York Mets. Casey Singer was last year for the closing game of the 1958 World Series, which was won by the New York Yankees here at the stadium that year. 1957, of course, at Yankee Stadium. In the seventh and final game, the Milwaukee Braves had taken the World Championship. And now, ladies and gentlemen, our national anthem. of the National Anthem. The Milwaukee Braves are on the field and we're getting set to go at Milwaukee's County Stadium. On a warm night today in Milwaukee, the temperature was over 80 degrees for the sixth consecutive day. So it is in the 70s here tonight. 
There is a breeze blowing across from first to third. And to lead off for the New York Mets, right-hand batter Jim Hickman, the young center fielder who is hitting 281 now, including 18 base hits, two doubles, and five home runs. Hickman has drawn 10 walks. This is his first season in the major leagues. Last year he played at Portland, the property of the St. Louis Cardinals. He is facing left-hander Warren Spahn, who was beaten by the New York Mets last Saturday when Hobie Landreth hit a home run in the bottom half of the ninth inning with a runner on. And now Spahn goes into the windup for the first pitch, and it is low for ball one. Ed Sudall, the umpire behind the plate this evening at Milwaukee's County Stadium. Spahn looking in to get the sign from catcher Joe Torrey. And now uh, he has called time and wants Torrey to come out. He wants to check signs. Defensively, of course, the Braves have Eddie Matthews playing at first base tonight. It is the first time in his entire Major League career anywhere that Eddie Matthews has ever played first base. Playing there because he has been out with a shoulder injury. A couple of weeks ago, he heard something pop in his shoulder and has been benched since then twice. So while he's been on the bench, he's been brought up as a pinch hitter. But his problem is throwing. And so he volunteered to play first base where he won't have to make the long throw that he would have to make at his normal position of third base. Last night in Pittsburgh, Dennis Menke, the rookie infielder, played first base. Uh, He is back over at third tonight. As Spahn is set to pitch once again to Jim Hickman. And this is a foul ball coming back. Torrey doffs the mask but does not come back as it's out of play onto the screen. And it's a count of one ball and one strike to Jim Hickman. Again, Spahn is set to work. To the leadoff man of the New York Mets. That one comes inside for ball two. It's two and one. Warren Spahn, 41 years old. Twelve times he has won 20 or more ball games in a single season. Here's the pitch. Swung on and full foul on the ground. Down past Sally Hemus coaching at third. And Hemus is going over to retrieve it. It's Cookie Lavagiato coaching at first tonight for manager Casey Singles Mets and Sally Hemus around at third. That is the usual situation as far as coaches are concerned. Elio Chacon is kneeling in the on-deck circle for the New York Mets on a very comfortable, pleasant evening at Milwaukee's County Stadium. Again, Spahn is set to work the 2-2 pitch goes high and it's out full 3-2 and two now to rookie Jim Hickman. Spahn has not worked since working against the New York Mets last Saturday. Before the ball game, he took off his cap to show a thinning scalp, and he says uh, losing ball games in the bottom half of the ninth inning on home runs is what causes you to lose that. There's a swing and a ground ball again, full foul and fielded by Sally Hemus, barehanded, flips it over to the right end and tosses it on over to Warren Spahn, and Spahn yells something over at Hemus. He fielded that one very neatly. So the count holds at three and two now to Jim Hickman. The ball game having just begun here at Milwaukee's County Stadium. Spahn with the wind-up and the pitch, and it's low. Ball four. Hickman has drawn a walk. So Jim Hickman opens up by drawing his 11th walk of this season, and the New York Mets have a base runner with nobody out, and Elio Chacon is coming up. The shortstop, who uh, has come on since last Saturday with a hot stick for the New York Mets, and now has his season's batting average at 254. 15 base hits, including two doubles and one triple. Chacon has drawn 13 walks this season. Left-hander Warren Spahn is into the stretch. Hickman leads at first base, and here's the pitch to the plate. Swung on and missed for a strike one. Tipped off, says umpire Ed Sudol. Got a little piece of it, but right back into the big glove of Joe Torre. This is the opening game of a four-game set between the Mets and the Milwaukee Braves. It is their first meeting, of course, here at County Stadium this season. A single game tomorrow and a big doubleheader on Sunday will conclude the series between the Braves and the Mets. Warren Spahn again, set to work. Fires over to first base and Hickman gets back. Eddie Matthews over there at first base. He is using Tommy Aaron's first baseman's glove since he did not possess one, of course. Tommy Aaron uh, played first. Another throw over to first that time before he got up on the rubber. Spahn firing it on back. Aaron went 0 for 20, so that is why he is not in the lineup at the moment. That is Tommy Aaron. 
Chacon tries to butt, goes as a strike, and it is a two-strike count to Chacon. Trying to push the butt to the right side. Charlie Neal has moved into the on-deck circle for the Mets. The Mets made the trip here to Milwaukee yesterday by chartered airline, and, uh, of course, they are coming off a two-game uh, streak over the Chicago Cubs, winning them both in extra innings. The Mets have won six of their last eight baseball games to move up in the National League standings, and they go from here to Houston to take on the Colt 45s next Monday night. Time call again here as Joe Torrey wants to go out and check with the veteran Warren Spawn. It's a two-strike count to Elio Chacon at the plate. Warren Spahn seeking his 313th career victory. This is Spahn's eighth start of the season. He has pitched four complete games. He has a record of three victories and four losses. Now, here's a two-strike pitch. It's low, gets away from Torrey, but he retrieves in a hurry. No advance by Jim Hickman. As Torrey had that mask off in a hurry, and the ball rolled off to his right about four feet. He was right on top of it. The young catcher... Who had a great year last year for the Milwaukee Braves. He was brought up in a hurry at the start of the season when Del Crandall developed arm trouble. Crandall, of course, off to a fine start this season. Tonight it is young Joe Torrey who is catching Warren Spahn. Spahn steps off the rubber and Hickman shortens up the lead. The count is one ball and two strikes to Chacon. Now Chacon steps out of the batter's box. Everyone just about set to go once again. Chacon standing as deep in that batter's box as you can get. Swing at a pop-up down the third baseline. It's in foul territory now, and Dennis Menke gives it a run over. Takes it in foul territory. Hickman tags, moves off about three steps, but Menke runs it back and tosses it over to Spahn. No advance, one away, and Charlie Neal coming up. Charlie Neal with a batting average of 280, including three home runs. He has drawn 11 walks this season. Hickman at first base, one man out. Neal, of course, has played here many times during his career with the Los Angeles Dodgers and the Brooklyn Dodgers. Throw over to first, Hickman gets back safely. The area out in center field that was once known as Perini's Woods has been uh, filled with a bleacher area now, although no fans permitted to sit there. As a let up, uh, Neal swings and misses. Strike one. There used to be a little woodland straight away in center field, and uh, it finally sort of died away. They called it Perini's Woods uh, for Lou Perini, the owner of the ball club. But now it's been filled in with bleachers. However, they only use them for football. It's a straightaway in center, and the green background, the Milwaukee hitters say, provides them a better background. Here's a ground ball to the right side, taken by Bowling over to McMillan. He's out there, throw to first. He's safe there, as Eddie Matthews, trying to reach him a backhanded, couldn't get his feet straightened out exactly, and Charlie Neal is safe at first base after having forced his, uh, Jim Hickman. Two men out, and now Charlie Neal is the base runner at first. And Frank Thomas is coming up. He's getting a hand here because, of course, he played with the Milwaukee Braves last year. Frank Thomas, the only member of the New York Mets to have played in every game they've played this season. He has a season's batting average of 302, and he has eight home runs, and he's batted in 20 runs to lead the club in that department. Strong right-hand batter, Frank Thomas. Set up pitches in there for a call strike. Strike one count to Thomas with Gil Hodges having moved into the on-deck circle now. Pitch is low and away. It is ball one. One and one. The throw on the relay from Roy McMillan on over to Eddie Matthews a little off the bag there a moment ago. 
And Matthews is not familiar with shifting his feet over there. That pitch is low. And actually got a glove on it, but it rolled a few feet away from him. Neal's safe to prevent the double play. Two balls and one strike now to Frank Thomas. Vaughn now into pitching position. Neal takes his lead at first base. Let a pitch and it's driven deep to left field. Bedell is going back. He's in the winding track and one hands it up against the wall. Well, the outfit retires the side. The ball was well hit by Thomas and Howie Bedell went back across the winding track and one handed it near the wall going back. Or the outfit retires the side. So the New York Mets are out in the top half of the first inning with no runs on no hit, no errors, and one man left. And at the end of one half inning of play, the score is the New York Mets nothing and the Milwaukee Braves coming up nothing. You are. Ask me, Vic Damone, what beer to buy. I'll tell you. That Rheingold Extra Dry. Now that's the beer to buy. Its flavor's brisk and bright. And clearly extra dry. It's New York's favorite brew. The only one for you. Because it's dry and true. That's Rheingold Extra Dry. The taste of Rheingold's bright. Because it's brewed just right. Brewed long and slow for flavor. Clean and extra dry. That Rheingold Extra Dry. Now that's the beer to buy. It's extra dry, that's why Have some Rheingold beer tonight It's New York's favorite brew The only one for you Because it's dry and true Have a Rheingold beer tonight Going out of the bottom half of the first inning, and the Milwaukee Braves will send up Howie Vidal, Roy McMillan, and Mac Jones. Vidal, of course, is a left-hand batter and a speedster in his first year with the Milwaukee Braves. He has a batting average of 221 thus far this season. He's been alternated out there in left field with Tommy Aaron. Mike Kresnick has been used out there. He switched them all around. Milwaukee Braves still trying to find a magic formula here in the early season. Roger Craig winds and fires, and the pitch goes low for ball one. And Hobie Landreth races out to the mound now to get something straight with Roger Craig. Craig and Spahn are facing each other for the second time this season. Last Sunday at the Polo Grounds. Or last Saturday at the Polo Grounds, rather. In a game won by the Mets, 3-2, to two, Craig pitched seven effective innings, giving up five hits, one of which was a homer by Del Crendel. There's a swing and a foul ball. Back and out of play. One ball and one strike to count to Bedell. Craig got credit for the Met victory over the Cubs Tuesday night in the 13-inning game. Here's a swing and a drive. It's going up the middle for a base hit. Jim Hickman coming in, fields the ball, relays it in, and Howie Bedell turns and holds it first with a single off Roger Craig. And that brings up Ryan McMillan with a runner at first, nobody out. McMillan, the shortstop, has a batting average of 256, two home runs, and ten runs batted in. Roger Craig was saying before the ball game that actually he finds that he is Able to work better that his control is sharper if he gets only two days rest. Here's a swing and a miss and running is Fidel sliding in as there's no throw. The ball was dropped behind the plate by Hobie Landreth. Had the hit and run going and McMillan swung and missed, but uh, the low pitch was dropped by Landreth so there was no throw and Fidel is still in second. He has tremendous speed and he showed it to good effect that time as he got a good jump and was flying down to second base. Braves have a runner at second. There is nobody out. It's a strike one count to Roy McMillan at the plate. Craig's pitch, bunted foul as McMillan trying to push it out there to get Fidel on over to third base. So it's a two-strike count. And again, Landreth and Craig are checking. Apparently, uh, they're having a little problem with the sign, so they're checking things out here. 
Against the Cubs on Tuesday night, Roger Craig had three very effective innings in relief. He gave up no runs on only one hit. Last Saturday against the Braves, he pitched seven innings in which he gave up only five hits. He struck out seven Braves that time. Craig has won two games and lost three thus far this season. Swing and a ground ball foul. Knocked down by Billy Adair, the coach at third for the Milwaukee Braves. They have Andy Pafko coaching at first and Billy Adair on at third. Coach Jimmy Dykes stays in the dugout along with manager Bertie Tebbets. And pitching coach Whitlow Wyatt is out in the bullpen. Both bullpens are located out beneath the scoreboard in right field. Here at Milwaukee's County Stadium. It's a two-strike count to McMillan. Bedell leads off the bag at second. As Roger Craig is into pitching position. Wheels and does not throw to second. As Bedell hurries back to the bag. Again, Craig is set to work. It's just swung on and fouled off out of play. So the count holds it two strikes to Roy McMillan with Mac Jones in the on-deck circle now for the Milwaukee Braves. Braves, of course, have had their problems with some of their big men. Joe Adcock is presently out with a pulled thigh muscle. You recall that last weekend when the Braves were in New York, Adcock was just recovering from a cold and laryngitis. He did get into action in the second game of the doubleheader uh, last Saturday. But then uh, he pulled a thigh muscle and will be out for a while longer. Pulled it to uh, rounding first base. He was saying before the ball game, I must have rounded first base a few thousand times in my baseball career. This is the first time this ever happened. Pitches in there for a call strike three. So Craig strikes out McMillan. One away. Holding at second, Howie Vidal. Now with one man out, Mac Jones comes up. Left-hand batter with lots of speed. He's hitting 315. He has four home runs. He's batted in 16 runs, and he has drawn 18 walks this season. Strangely enough, the Milwaukee Braves and the New York Mets are all even in the loss column in the standings. Each has lost 18 games. Pitch is low for ball. Yesterday, the afternoon paper here in Milwaukee ran a three-column story in the sports section pointing out that the Braves were now even with the Mets in what they facetiously called the all-important loss column. Craig checks it second and deals to Jones, and he swings and misses. One and one to count. The Milwaukee Braves have won 15 and lost 18. The New York Mets have won 9 and lost 18. This is a 1-1 pitch to Jones. He swings and misses. Change of speed there by Craig. 1 and 2 the count. And now Jones has asked the umpire, Ed Sudol, behind the plate to look at the ball. He does look at it, and he fires it right back out to Roger Craig. Count to Mac Jones is one ball and two strikes. Eddie Matthews is on deck. Now Chacon comes in behind. Howie Bedell and runs him back to the bag at second. No throw, although Craig stepped off the rubber. Once again, we're set to go. And the pitch to Jones is in there for a call strike three. Cut the inside corner. And Jones rocked back and stood all. Has called him out on strikes. He was crowding the plate pretty well, but it's strikeout number two for Roger Craig. As he bears down to get Mac Jones out of there. And here is Eddie Matthews returning to action and getting ahead at Milwaukee's County Stadium. A left-hand batter playing first base for the first time ever anywhere in his baseball career. He has a season's batting average of 256, and Matthews has six home runs. Batting in the cleanup spot tonight for manager Bertie Tebbett's Milwaukee Braves. Dell leads off second. Craig works low and away to Eddie Matthews. Yeah. 
Eddie is 30 years of age. Already has blasted 376 big league home runs. Craig turns, throws to second, and it gets away from Chacon, rolls a few feet away, and Bedell holds at second. Chacon is shortstop coming in behind Bedell, and they had a close play. Although the ball popped out of the glove of Chacon and uh, rolled a few feet away, and Bedell had him blocked off the ball for a second. But no chance for any advance. Chacon is short, playing back on the edge of the outfield grass against Matthews. Check swing, but he went through with it enough to uh, be a strike. It's one and one. Against power hitter Eddie Matthews, Hodges is playing a deep first base. Neal on the edge of the outfield grass at second. And Chacon pulled over toward the bag and playing back about uh, eight feet on the outfield grass. Here's a swing and a drive going to center field. Hickman going back, back, and Hickman hauls it down for the out. Hit on the button by Eddie Matthews, but Jim Hickman in center field got a good jump on it. Went over to pull it down, and the Braves are out in the bottom half of the first inning with no runs on one hit, no errors, and one man left. And so at the end of one pulling and play, the score is the Milwaukee Braves nothing and the New York Mets nothing. Now let's take a look at scores elsewhere in the major leagues. In the National League, all night games, and at the end of three and a half in Philadelphia, the Cubs and the Bills were all tied 3-3. Cardwell going for Chicago. Dennis Bennett started for the Bills, and has been relieved by Bobby Locke now. Ernie Banks at a homer in the third with nobody on. George Altman homered in the third with nobody on. That's for the Cubs. And Tony Gonzalez homered in the third with two men on for the Philadelphia Phillies. Houston Colt 45s are at San Francisco tonight to play the Giants in the latest start. In Pittsburgh, at the end of three innings of play, the Cincinnati Reds won, the Pittsburgh Pirates won. Bob Perky going against Harvey Haddix and Bill Verdon homered in the third with nobody on for the Pittsburgh Pirates. The St. Louis Cardinals play the Los Angeles Dodgers on the coast. A later start tonight. In the American League, at the end of five and one half innings of play, the Minnesota Twins lead the New York Yankees by a score of two to one. Bill Lee going against Whitey Ford. And in Chicago, at the end of one inning of play, the Baltimore Orioles won, Chicago White Sox nothing. It is Fisher for Baltimore and Juan Trezaro for Chicago. The end of three and a half innings in Washington. The Kansas City A's and the Senators are tied 1-1. Fister against Burnside. At the end of three and a half innings of play in Boston, the Red Sox lead the Angels 4-1. Gerber started for the Angels. Donahue in the second. Cisco for Boston. At the end of four and a half innings of play in Cleveland, the Indians lead the Tigers 3-1. Poitak against Donovan. And right now, Gil Hodges is coming up to lead off in the top half of the second inning for the New York Mets. Big right-hand batting first baseman. First pitch to Hodges is low for ball one. Jill Hodges facing Warren Spawn. Here's the pitch to Hodges. Swung on and has to drive going deep to left center field. Bedell going back, but this is getting a long ride, and it is into the bleachers for a home run for Gil Hodges. Number 366 in his career. Gil Hodges with home run number 366. A tremendous drive out near the 392-foot sign into the left center field bleachers at Milwaukee's County Stadium. And the Milwaukee Braves... Trail in the ball game now as the Mets have gone out in front by a score of one to nothing. Here is Felix Mantilla coming up. He put in sixth season with the Braves. Here's a swing and a foul ball coming back. Boy, strike one to Felix Mantilla. Mantilla has a season's batting average of 319, including one home run and eight runs batted in. He has had five doubles. Swing and a foul ball. This is back and out of play. Mantilla came to the major leagues with these Milwaukee Braves. He came as a shortstop, but during his tenure here for six seasons, he was used at short and at third and in the outfield. Kept saying that if he ever got a chance to play regularly, that he would hit for an average a great deal more than he did uh, in spot performances. And so far, he has hit well for the Mets with a batting average of 319. 
Lawrence Bowen winds and fires and hits him in the back as he turns out of there. He is hit by a pitch ball, and Mantilla goes down to first. And that brings up Gus Bell. Gus Bell, a left-hand batter, manager Casey Single has two left-hand batters in the lineup tonight against uh, lefty Warren Spahn. He has Gus Bell and Hobie Landreth. You'll recall that it was Hobie Landreth whose home run beat Warren Spahn in the bottom half of the ninth inning last Saturday. Bell is hitting 149. One home run and five runs batted in. Felix Mantilla takes his lead at first base. Vaughn checks him and deals to Bell. Swinging a foul ball. Coming back and it's out of play. Hobie Landreth has moved into the on-deck circle now for the New York Mets. There's nobody out here in the top half of the second inning. Vaughn... Checks and deals. That pitch is low to Gus Bell. One ball and one strike. Defensively, the Braves have Eddie Matthews playing first base, Frank Bowling at second, Roy McMillan at short, and Dennis Menke at third. They have Howie Bedell in left, Henry Aaron in center, and Mac Jones in right. Joe Torrey is the catcher, and Warren Spahn is the pitcher. Swing and a ground ball to the right side. Bowling has it placed to McMillan. He's out there. The relay to first. He's safe there. Bell beats the relay. He's safe at first base. So he has forced Mantia. The play going from Bowling to McMillan. But for the second time tonight, the Mets have prevented the completion of the double play. And this is Hobie Landreth coming up. He is hitting 346. Three doubles and a home run. And he is facing Spawn for the first time since he hit the game-winning home run in the bottom half of the ninth inning at the Polo Grounds last Saturday. There is one man out as Spawn stretches and pitches, and it's in there for a call strike to Hobie Landreth. He stands five feet, eight inches tall. Danny Murtaugh over at Pittsburgh says he's getting shorter every time one of those batters hits him on top of the head with that bat. It's happened twice this baseball season. He has been struck in the top of the head by free swinging batters, and each time uh, stitches were required. Here's a pitch swung on, and there is a drive to the shortstop. He's out there. McMillan throws to first, and he's doubled out there. So Landreth has lined into a double play. A shot to McMillan, and he threw on to Eddie Matthews to complete the double play. And so in the top half of the second inning, the New York Mets got one run on one hit. The home run by Gil Hodges, no errors, and nobody left. And at the end of one and one half innings of play, the score is the New York Mets won and the Milwaukee Braves nothing. Well, let's stay right on the subject of baseball and see if you have the answer to this Rheingold riddle. Let's suppose the batter hits a long fly ball down the right field foul line. The right fielder comes over to the line in an attempt to make the catch. With his feet in fair territory, he extends his hands over the foul line and drops the ball. Got it? Feet in fair territory. Ball drops in foul territory. Give up? Well, the correct ruling is foul ball. The position of the ball in relation to the foul line is the determining factor, so foul ball is the correct ruling in this case. Now, here's a ruling, a rule of thumb, that's correct in any case. If you want beer as beer should taste, the one to order is Rheingold Extra Dry. And those two words, extra dry, tell you why. Yes, sir, they tell you that Rheingold has a taste all its own, brisk and bright, clean, clear through. Enjoy some along with the ball game. As we go to the bottom of the second, the Milwaukee Braves send up their number five hitter in the batting order, Henry Aaron, who has been in something of a slump this season. He's hitting 275. He has five home runs and 16 runs batted in. And for many ball players, that would be exceptional. But for Henry Aaron, it's a slump. Roger Craig looking in to get the side from Hobie Landreth. He dips into the windup. The pitch is on the way, and it's in there for a call strike one to Henry Aaron. Henry Aaron, we are told, has begun to worry just the least little bit about his failure to hit here in the early season. 
And for some ball players, that can be a very damaging thing indeed. Again, Craig is set to work. It's in there for a call strike two. Warren Spahn was riding him a little bit during batting practice, and Henry did not care for the riding at all. Apparently, he is very sensitive on this subject. Somebody ripped the ball out of there for a long distance, and Spahn says, Henry, that's the way you used to hit him. And Henry didn't care for that. Two-strike count as he's watched a couple. Here's the pitch. High and tight. Had him duck in at its ball one. It's one and two now. Joe Torre, the catcher, in the on-deck circle. Nobody on, nobody out. The Braves batting in the bottom half of the second inning. With the Mets out in front by a score of one to nothing on Gil Hodges' home run. That pitch misses outside. It's ball two now to Aaron. Craig takes just a moment to rub up the ball. Now he's back up on the rubber. Looking in for a sign from catcher Hobie Landreth. With a count of two balls and two strikes to Henry Aaron. The wind-up. And the pitch. Swung on as a drive deep to left field. And defending Thomas back. Going, going. Ties up the ball game. As Aaron comes on around to score in order to allow our stations to identify themselves, we pause now for station identification. This is your New York Met station in Schenectady, WGY, 810 on your radio dial. This is Lindsay Nelson with Ralph Kiner and Bob Murphy at Milwaukee's County Stadium, where Henry Aaron has opened up the bottom half of the second inning with a home run. For the Milwaukee Braves to tie the score at 1-1, and here is catcher Joe Torrey up with nobody out. Roger Craig winds and fires, and the pitch goes high and away for a ball. Here's a swing and a foul ball down the right field line, curving on over into the stands and out of play. It's a 1-1 count to Torrey. Of the top 13 active home run hitters in the major leagues today, five of them, five of the top 13 are represented here in this ballgame. Eddie Matthews has 376 career home runs. Gil Hodges has 366. Here's a swing and a ground ball going to third, taken by Mantia. Fires on to first in time to Gil Hodges, and Torrey is out. One away, nobody on, and Frank Bowling is coming up. Henry Aaron has 259 career home runs. Joe Adcock has 246. And Frank Thomas has 231. A lot of power in the ballgame. Bowling is hitting 294. Pitch is in there for a call strike to Bowling. And Warren Spahn, of course, has hit more home runs than uh, any pitcher in the history of the National League with 30. It's in there for a call strike. Strike two count now to Frank Bowling. Frank is just recovering from the effects of a cold, but has been in the lineup right along. Hutton had him duck in and came right on back to the screen. One ball and two strikes now to Bowling with one man out and nobody on for the Milwaukee Braves. Here's a one-two pitch, swung on and punched that into left field for a base hit. Frank Thomas down on one knee, comes up with it, fires it back in, and turning and holding it first is Frank Bowling with a single to left. Sort of backhanded that one, uh, punching it out into left field. And Dennis Menke is coming up now, the rookie third baseman of the Braves, who's been seeing a lot of action. Has a batting average of 196. One home run and six runs batted in. He's drawn four walks. M-E-N-K-E, Dennis Menke. That one broke a little low, and it's ball one.
throw over to first base is not in time as Frank Bowling gets back there safely. These two teams meet here again tomorrow afternoon and then a big Sunday doubleheader. We'll bring, be bringing you all of those, of course. There's another throw to first that's not in time. Pitch is low for ball. In a game being played tonight in Cleveland, Dick Donovan, who is pitching for the Cleveland Indians, has hit two home runs. Willie Kirkland has also hit one, but Donovan, the pitcher, has hit two home runs in tonight's ball game against Detroit. Here's a swing and a miss. Two balls and one strike. The most home runs ever by a pitcher in a game, three. Guy Hacker for Louisville in the American Association in 1886, and Jim Tobin for Boston in 1942. So Donovan has two already. Swing and a miss, and it's 2-2 now. One man out. Bowling takes his lead at first. Throw over there, not in time. Gil Hodges, the first baseman for the Mets. Defensively, they have Hodges at first, Charlie Neal at second, Elio Chacon at short, and Felix Mantilla at third. And the curveball is hit on the left on the field for a base hit. Bowling is on his way to third. As Hickman and Thomas collide, the ball rolls away, and Bowling is coming on. Hickman retrieves the ball. Thomas standing their hands on his hip. The relay gets away from Chacon, holding at second base. It's Dennis Minke. Jim Hickman and Frank Thomas collided going after the ground ball out there in the outfield. Not a severe collision. Uh, they simply bumped into each other. And uh, Hickman had to go on and run the ball down. But Bowling came on to score. It is scored as an error on Hickman in center field. A single and an error. And here is Warren Spahn at the plate. As the Braves have taken the lead by a score of two to one. Spawn up for his first time in the ball game. Swing and a ground ball pulled foul. Down past Andy Tafco, coaching it first. Dennis Menke, the base runner at second, he strung out a line drive, sort of an in-betweener. But both Thomas and Hickman got there in time to feel it and cut it off, but they bumped into each other. And then the ball rolled a few feet away, and Hickman ran it down. This one has popped up foul. Landreth turns, does not rid himself of the mask, and has no play. It's in the stands. Two-strike count to Warren Spahn. There is one man out for the Milwaukee Braves here in the bottom half of the second as the Braves have taken a two-to-one lead. In case you have joined us recently, Hodges put the New York Mets out in front with a home run. Then Henry Aaron tied it up with a home run. Frank Bowling has just scored to make it two-to-one. That pitch is high and tight to Warren Spahn. One and two. Barney is a man who loves to talk at great length about his uh, hitting ability. He'd rather talk to you about hitting than about pitching, a subject uh, on which he is certainly a very finished authority. He steps out of the batter's box now. Greg shakes off one sign. Now goes into the stretch. Menke leads at second base. The pitch swung on and pulled foul. So the count holds at one ball and two strikes to Warren Spahn. Spahn has been known uh, when asked uh, what kind of a hitter he is to say, well, you know, I can't explain. I'm just a good hitter. That's the way he feels about it. Minky leads at second now as Roger Craig is into the stretch. The pitch is on the way and it misses outside. It's two and two. Mets in the outfield defensively have Frank Thomas in left, Jim Hickman in center, and Gus Bell in right. 
Single game here tomorrow. Cecil Butler is uh, scheduled to go for the Milwaukee Braves against Jay Hook for the New York Mets. That's tomorrow. It's swung on. There's a fly ball going to right field. Gus Bell is coming on. He has it. Minky tags it second and comes far enough to draw the throw. It is cut off by Chacon, and Minky goes back to the bag at second. So Lawrence Braun has flied out to Gus Bell and right. No advance by Minky at second base. And leadoff man Howie Bedell is coming up. He has been up one time and he's single, stole second, and died right there. Roger Craig walking slowly back to the mound. In anticipation of the thought that Minky might tag up uh, at second and try to go to third, Craig had gone over to back up third base and he returned slowly. It's a warm night here in Milwaukee. And a full moon as well. At the end of six innings of play, the New York Yankees lead the Minnesota Twins by a score of three to two. Here's a pitch to Bedell in there for a call strike one. He chokes up a little on the bat. Throw goes through to second base. Chacon fields it back safely as Dennis Menke. Chacon coming over it to the right side of the back. A couple of steps to feel that throw down there by Hobie Landry. Roy McMillan now on deck for the Milwaukee Braves. This one has popped up to short. Left center and going back is Chacon the shortstop to make the catch. So Bedell has popped out to Elio Chacon, who went out in short left center to make the play on the ball. And in the bottom half of the second inning, the Milwaukee Braves got two runs on three hits. There was one error, and there was one man left. And so at the end of two full innings of play at Milwaukee's County Stadium, the score is the Milwaukee Braves two and the New York Mets one. The New York Mets will be playing a single game here tomorrow, then a doubleheader on Sunday. On Monday night, they'll be playing the Houston Colt 45s in Houston. On Tuesday night, they'll play the Houston Colt 45s in Houston. Then on Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday nights, they'll be meeting the Los Angeles Dodgers in Los Angeles. On Saturday afternoon, they'll play the San Francisco Giants in San Francisco. Then they'll meet the Giants in a doubleheader on Sunday. We'll be bringing you all of those games, of course, and we invite you to join us each day. The Mets will be returning home on Memorial Day to take on the Los Angeles Dodgers at the Polo Grounds in a doubleheader. And then the following night, they will meet the Dodgers in a single night game. And then on June 1st, the Giants will come in for a three-day series. So, lots of action coming your way. If you'd like to purchase tickets for games to be played at the Polo Grounds in New York, there is a Met ticket office located in Grand Central Station, another in Pennsylvania Station. You can order tickets by mail, addressing your request to Ticket Manager, Polo Grounds, New York, 39, New York. Or you can make ticket reservations at any of the Howard Close stores. Roger Craig is coming up now, and coming in here is Ralph Kiner. Thank you, Lindsay Nelson. The score of the ball game, 2-1 Milwaukee. They scored two in the bottom of the second to take the lead away from the New York Mets. And here is Roger Craig, right-handed batter, and Warren Spahn hits him right on the back of the back. So Warren Spahn puts Craig on by hitting him in the middle of the back. And that's one apiece. And here comes Jim Hickman. Hickman batting 281. Walked in the first inning. He has five home runs and ten runs batted in. He's looking for the sign from Salihimus coaching the third at first base, Cookie Lavagetto. Mets scored their run and a home run by Gil Hodges. That was his fifth of the season, his 366th in his career. Hickman playing in center field, a right-handed batter. And the left-handed pitcher to the plate as Hickman squares around, takes outside, ball one. Playing at first base, holding Roger Craig on, Eddie Matthews. And the next pitch back to the plate is taken again, ball two. And on both pitches, Hickman around the bunt. So spawn behind, two balls and no strikes to Jim Hickman with the runner at first base to score 2-1 in favor of Milwaukee. Quite a few changes in this ballpark since my playing days. It's certainly become a beautiful baseball park. Playing area in perfect shape. 
Spawn back to the plate. It's hit high in the air to shallow right field. In right field, Mac Jones moving in. He is waiting there, and he makes the catch. So Hickman goes down for the first out, and the batter now coming in is Elio Chacon. Chacon batting 254. Popped up to the third baseman in foul territory. He is 0 for 1. Roger Craig still at first base. The Mets need one to die. Elia Chacon takes a long look at Salahimus. He's had trouble with the signs. He has trouble with the English language, which might be one of the problems. First pitch by Spahn is outside. Down around the knees, ball one. Joe Torrey catching in the ball game for Milwaukee at first base, Eddie Matthews. Second base, Frank Bowling. At shortstop, Roy McMillan. At third base, Dennis Medke. In the outfield, Howie Bedell in left field. Hank Aaron in center playing very shallow. In right field, Mac Jones. Spawn back to the plate after the high kick, and he misses inside with a slider. Ball two. Two balls, no strikes. Playing dimensions here in the ballpark, a symmetrical ballpark. 320 down the left field line. 360 in left and right center. Actually in center left center and center right center. It's 392. 402 feet straight away center field. Two balls and no strikes. Spawn goes to first base, but Craig with the short lead gets back easily. Ball does not carry well here in this ballpark. It's not a good park to hit in. Ballpark situated sort of down in a hole, so there's not too many air currents. Wind blows in from right field tonight. 2 0 pitch. Chacon takes ball three. Three balls and no strikes as Warren Spawn works to Elias Chacon, who is batting in the second position, playing at shortstop. Minnesota Twins have taken the lead over the New York Yankees in the top of the seventh with two runs. They now lead four to three. Chacon takes a called strike. Three balls and one strike. So that leads seesawing back and forth. Killebrew had a home run in the seventh inning to give them the two runs. So Killebrew a big feature in that game. Twins have played very good ball through the first part of this season. 2-1 2-1 game in favor of Milwaukee as Spawn checks his runner at first base and throws to the plate on the 3-1 pitch. It's fouled away. The count goes to three balls and two strikes. On deck batter, Charlie Neal. Fair crowd on hand tonight. Nothing like the old days when every time they turned the lights on, they had 40,000. used to turn out about 20,000 just for a baseball clinic out here at the ballpark. Spawn into the stretch and to first base as he moves Craig back there. Count is three balls and two strikes. One man down. There's a possibility Craig could be going. He does not have a jacket on. It's a warm night. Now spawn to the plate. Craig does not go, but he gets second base free as Chacon takes high for ball four. So Warren Spawn with his second walk, putting runners at first and second base and coming up to bat Charlie Neal. Number four, Neal batting 280 at the start of the ball game was safe on the fielder's choice in the first inning when he grounded down to the second baseman. So he is 0 for 1. Charlie playing at second base. Bats from the right-hand side. Roger Craig out at second base with a short lead. He got on by being hit by a pitch ball. Ely Chacon at first base with a larger lead. He is there as a result of a walk. And the next pitch, first pitch, to Neal's hit down to the shortstop. And the chance for two to play the second in time, the first in time. So the second double play in two innings by the Milwaukee Braves and Warren Spahn is out of the jam. And in the inning for the New York Mets, no runs on no hits. There were no errors, one walk, 
One player hit by a pitch ball and one man left. And the score at the end, uh, two and one half innings of play. The Milwaukee Braves, two. The New York Mets, one. Coming up now, jazz, smooth, suave, and sweet. Listen. My beer is Rheingold, a dry beer. Think of Rheingold whenever you buy beer. It's not bitter, not sweet. It's the dry flavor treat. Won't you try extra dry Rheingold beer? Won't you try extra dry Rheingold beer? Like the song says, people everywhere sing out, My beer is Rheingold, the dry beer. And dry tells you why. Yes, sir. Dry tells you Rheingold has a brisk, bright, clean taste all its own. Discover the difference dry makes. Pour yourself a tall, refreshing glass of Rheingold Extra Dry. Enjoy it right now along with the ball game. Moving now to the Milwaukee half of the third. The score two one in their favor. They will send up their shortstop and second batter in the batting order, order Roy McMillan as their first man, followed by Mac Jones and then Eddie Matthews. Roger Craig taking his warm up pitches on the mound. The throw down to second base to Charlie Neal. The Chacon over to the third baseman Mantia and back to Craig, and we're all set to go. Full moon right over the top of the light standards in left center field. A beautiful night. This is the warmest night of the year. Temperature is about 88 degrees here in Milwaukee. And Craig looking for the sign. McMillan batting 256, struck out his first time up, and he takes high inside, ball one. Bill Adair, the coach at third base for the tw- for the Milwaukee Braves at first base, Andy Papko. Craig back to the plate, and the pitch is hit high in the air to shallow left field. Tom, Thomas coming in now, runs the shortstop off the play. Chacon was back out there, and he makes the catch. So Craig picks up McMillan for his first out. For his first out here in the third inning. And the batter is Mac Jones. Craig also struck out Jones in the first inning as he struck out two, so he is 0 for 1, takes a 315 average into the game. He's a left-handed batter playing in right field. First pitch to him, a fastball that's through, strike one. Rogers gave it up two runs on four hits. He has struck out two, walk none. Mets have one run on one hit against Bond. Craig outside, missing by about a foot. So the count now, one ball, one strike. Craig's record this year, two wins and four losses. Both his wins coming as a relief pitcher. Back to the plate and attempted to bunt, but the ball was missed. And the count now, one ball and two strikes. Jones, moving away from the plate, had a good jump, but he couldn't contact the ball. Mac Jones, Willie McCovey, and Casey Stingle all broke into the major leagues the same way. And the right way, if you can do it, four for four. Craig with a one-two pitch. A call, strike three. Curveball breaking over, got him looking. So Craig picks up his third strikeout. Jones has a little discussion with Ed Sudol, the home plate umpire, as he walks toward the dugout. And coming on the batter's box, Eddie Matthews. Matthews flied out deep to right field. A line shot his first time up. He brought a 256 average into the ball game. He did not play in any game in the series in New York against the Mets. Being bothered by a sore shoulder in his right shoulder. He takes outside ball one. Technically, he called it tendonitis. Still has trouble throwing, so he's been put at first base in order to conserve the throwing part of the game, but to get the big bat in the lineup. Matthews has six home runs, 21 runs batted in. Greg back to Eddie Matthews, a call strike. One ball, one strike. Two outs, 2-1 game, Milwaukee, bottom of the third. (laughs) 
The 1-1 pitch by Roger Craig. Swung on a miss. Strike two. <coughs> Matthews, with tremendous power, has been handicapped in this ballpark because it does not aid a power hitter. There's a foul on the ground. He had a ballpark in Boston, the old Boston ballpark, that was much better. Here it's 392, about 390 in his power alley in right center field. That's a pretty good pull. One ball, two strikes, two men out. Craig shakes off the first ball. Signed by Hobie Landreth now takes the second. And the one two pitch. Swung on and missed strike three. Matthews had a bad swing of that, and you could tell that his shoulder still bothers him as he swings. So Roger Craig, for the second time, picks up two strikeouts in an inning. He now has four, and that retires the side. At the end of three, the Milwaukee Braves, two, the New York Mets, one. You know, lots of fans are switching to the Mets. And lots of fans are switching to Vice Roy's for the taste that's right. And one of the reasons why the fans are switching to the Mets is the fact that National League Baseball is being brought into the foregrounds and back to New York City by the New York Mets. And you'll have your chance coming up on May 30th to see one of the most exciting ball teams in the country come back to New York for the first time in four years. It'll be the Los Angeles Dodgers moving in for their first series from the big doubleheader on May the 30th. They'll play a night game on May 31st, and then the San Francisco Giants move in for a series right after that. You can get tickets for all these games at three convenient locations. At the Polo Grounds in Grand Central Station, that's over in the Vanderbilt Ramp side, and also you can get tickets in Pennsylvania Station in the Long Island waiting room. And you can also deal in at Howard Clothing Stores, where you can get reservations for tickets there. While we have a second now, we pause for station identification. 810 on your dial. This is WGY Schenectady. Top of the fourth inning, the score 2-1 as Frank Thomas steps in against Warren Spahn. And the first pitch to him is hit deep to left field. It's down the line, and it is a home run. Frank Thomas, a line shot over the left field fence, ties it up at two to two. Well, Frank, his first time up, lined out the left field deep that was caught by the left fielder. This time he made sure he couldn't get to it. He drilled it right over the fence, about 20 feet high, right down the line. That's home run 232 in his career. That's number nine for the season. He leads the Mets in that department. And he has contributed one of the two home runs by the Mets here in the game tonight. Coming up now, the man who put the Mets out in front of the first inning, Gil Hodges. Gil hit his 366 in that inning. And the first pitch to Gil is a strike call through at the letter. Ball game all tied up at 2-2. No one out in the top of the fourth inning. And Spawn back to Hodges. Outside, ball one. Yo came into the game hitting 300. His home run, of course, increased that average. Now the left-hander into the windup. And Gill swings and hits a slow, bouncing ball to third. Off Menke's chest. Menke picks it up, throws to first, but not in time. Dennis Menke, playing at third base, waited for that ball and got the bad hop as he waited. It scored an error. So Hodges on first base. That's the first error by the Milwaukee Braves. And the batter is Felix Mantia. Felix was hit by a pitch ball in the second inning. He's batting 319. Warren Spahn into the check set and to the plate. Mantilla goes around the bunt, takes it outside, ball one. 
Don Notabard up in the bullpen for the Milwaukee Braves. The bullpen here is located out behind the right center field fence. It's very difficult to see who is throwing. And for the ball players, it's very difficult for the manager to see them, so they have a ball out there. Mantia, right-handed batter at third base with a 1-0 count. He again squares around, takes in the outside corner, calls strike one. So the count now, one ball, one strike. 2-2 game. No one out in the top of the fourth inning. Two pretty good hitters out at first base, Eddie Matthews and Gil Hodges. Matthews breaks in on the possible bunt. And Mantia takes inside as Bond misses with a slider. So the count now, two balls, one strike. Mantia moving around to bunt again. Looks down for the sign with a count of two and one. Spahn does not appear to be as sharp with his control here tonight as he was in the opening game against the Mets and the Polo Grounds. He's walked two, but he's been behind a lot of batters, and he has been pitching somewhat high. There's a swing and a foul back in the screen, strike two. Two balls and two strikes with no one out. Gil Hodges at first base with a fairly good lead. Spahn looks there, throws to the plate. The ball is lying on the left field line. Bedell going over near the line, can't get to it, it's foul. Out near the left field line, the stands converge on the foul line pole, so there's not much running room after you cross the line. That ball hit into the net area above a fence that's in foul territory. Bedell could not get to it. In the early stages of the ballpark, the fence here was a low fence, and several players were hurt when they crashed into it and fell over the top. Now it's higher, and it's been padded all the way up. That's a area out there where the net is where the Braves have a refreshment area. Hodges goes, Mantia pops it up. It's back a home play, coming back Joe Torrey. Hodges going back to first base. Torrey by the screen makes a fine catch. One man down, the batter, Gus Bell. Holding at first base, Gil Hodges. He was moving on the play, but Mantia couldn't do it. So Gill comes back to first. Bell hit into a forced place. First time up, he is 0 for 1. Left-handed batter playing right field. Batting 148. Warren Spahn to Gus Bell with his first pitch. A high fly ball to deep center field. Aaron moving back is near the warning track. Now backs up near the fence and he makes a catch. Hodges tagging up, going to second base and he makes it easily. That gives you an idea how deep that ball is hit. Hodges tagged up with the play and had no trouble going down to second base. Fine play by Gil Hodges anticipating the catch. And he moves up to closer scoring position with the batter moving into the batter's box. Hobie Lander. Hobie hit into a double play his last time up, his only time up. He is 0 for 1. Batting 3.33. He has nine hits and 27 times at bat. And of course, one of them is only home run of the season in that one a game against Warren Spahn in the Polo Grounds. Two run homer in the ninth inning. The left fielder, Ari Bedell, is playing about as deep as he would play for Frank Thomas, and he was called in by Bertie Tevis. Now he's moved into a fairly deep left field, even for a left-handed batter. Spawn looking at second, comes to the plate with a fastball. It's a strike call. 2-2 game. 
Two outs in the top of the fourth inning. A one-strike pitch to Landreth, up high, ball one. One ball, one strike. Roger Craig is the on-deck man, so you can bet that Spy will be pitching carefully to Hobie Landreth. The eighth position in the batting order, a tough position to hit in. You get very, very seldom you get a good pitch to hit. There's a perfect curve in the outside corner. Strike two. One ball, two strikes. Gil Hodges at second base with two men down. 2-2 game. Warren Spahn back to the plate. Just outside. Ball two. Spahn missing at the knees. Two balls, two strikes. Now Landreth calls time. Goes over and gets some pine tar in his bat. This is a good night for that. Landreth, the left-handed batter, batting against Warren Spahn, a left-handed pitcher. Spahn with a sign into the stretch and the check of the runner at second base, and the pitch to the plate is fouled away. So the Cal will stay at two and two. Mets have won six of their last eight ball games. They're moving along. Now Spahn back with a 2-2 pitch, and this one's just outside, ball three. A full count on Hobie. With Gil Hodges at second base, and the on-deck batter, Roger Craig. Spahn has won three and lost four this year. He is all one against the Mets. Last year, a 21-game winner, and he has a career total of 312. He shakes yes after about three signs, and now the pitch to the plate is fouled back towards the radio booth. And just about coming in to the radio booth, and Lindsey Nelson, where were you? I wasn't there. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't like the way you went after that one. I'll tell you, I'm going to have to put you some other position. <laughs> You must have been a stick man and not a glove man. <laughs> so the count holds at 3-2 with two outs. <laughs> New York Mets 2, the Milwaukee Braves 2. Top of the fourth inning. As Spahn sets in the mound. And the 3-2 pitch to Lander. It's hit on the ground to the third base side. Up with the balls, Menke over to first base in time. The side is retired. In the inning for the New York Mets, one run on a home run by Frank Thomas, his ninth of the season. Only one hit, one error in the inning, and one man left in the score. At the end, uh, three and one-half innings of play, the New York Mets two, the Milwaukee Braves two. And now, a word from Viceroy Cigarettes. I was at the races, and the track was fast, and the horses I backed ran dead last. I couldn't believe it, but the gal next to me had just finished picking three out of three. It was plain to see I could use some advice, so I offered her a smoke, <laughs> just to break the ice. She said, I only smoke filters, but some are so mild you can hardly taste them. And I just smiled. <laughs> I said, Viceroy tastes the way you'd like a filter cigarette to taste. 
not too strong, not too light. Viceroy's got the taste that's right. That's right. That's right. That's, that's right. right. Now when I go to the track, I win, because I bring along my next of kin. Ah, that's right. So I want you to know, when I'll take all bets, if you smoke all seven builder cigarettes, you'll find some too strong. Some too light. But Viceroy's got the taste that's right. That's right. That's right. That's, that's right. right. Rob Kiner along with Lindsey Nelson and Bob Murphy from County Stadium in Milwaukee on a perfect night. And we're moving to the bottom half of the fourth inning with the score all tied up at 2-2. Two to two. And in the batter's box for the second time, the first time a home run with no one on, Hank Aaron. Hank playing in center field, bats on the right-hand side. He takes the first pitch, low ball one. Roger Craig working on the mound has worked through now three innings, giving up two runs on four hits. He has struck out four batters. Next pitch to Aaron, foul back, strike one. Roger has not walked a batter in the ballgame so far. One ball, one strike on Henry Aaron. Number 44, outfield playing deep and pulled around to the left side. Elia Chacon is playing in the hole at shortstop. Next pitch by Craig, a good fastball in the outside corner, letter high, strike two. That's the fastest pitch Craig's throwing all night. He had some mustard on that one. Aaron stands with a closed stance, fairly deep from the plate. He used to be closer at one time. Now the one-two pitch to Hank Aaron. Down low, ball two. Two balls, two strikes. The on-deck batter, Joe Torrey, he'll be followed by Frank Bowling. Aaron batting in the fifth position in the batting order. The next pitch to him. Line to Mantia. He gloves it for it out. Felix Mantia moving to his left. Took it about knee high. One-handed. And Aaron is out. And now Joe Torrey steps in. A right-handed batter doing the catching. Joe, a Brooklyn boy. He's batting 261. At the start of the game, he was batting 261. He grounded out to third, so that drops his average down. The first pitch to him is a strike call. He's now batting 255. Aaron, who was out, came up with a 281 average. Now the right-hander back to the plate. A check in the swing is called ball one. One ball, one strike. Tomorrow will be a day game starting at 2.30 New York time. Sunday, a doubleheader. 1-1 one, one pitch to Torrey. He's grounded down to the shortstop. Chacon over to his right. The long throw in time by two steps out number two. So two men up and two men down. And the batter coming on now is Frank Bowling. Bowling scored the second of the two Milwaukee runs when he scored on an error. Scores 2-2. Two, two. Mets runs have come on home runs, one by Gil Hodges, one by Frank Thomas. First pitch to Bowling, a right-handed batter, is low, ball one. Bowling from the American League, a fine second baseman, has done the same thing over here in the National. Craig back and is fouled back on the screen, strike one. Throw the count now, one ball, one strike. Bowling's batting 301. Next pitch to him is hit high in the air to center field. Hickman has plenty of time. He moves over towards left center, and he makes a catch to retire the side. So for the Milwaukee Braves, three up and three down, the score at the end of four. The New York Mets, two runs on two hits. They made one error. 
The Milwaukee Braves, two runs on four hits. They have also made one error. And now as we move to the top of the fifth inning, here is Lindsey Nelson to bring you up to date on all the scores around the major leagues. Thanks very much, Ralph Kiner. In the National League tonight, at the end of five and one-half innings of play, the Chicago Cubs seven and the Philadelphia Phillies four. On Cardwell for the Chicago Cubs, Dennis Bennett started for the Phillies, and Bobby Locke has relieved him. Ernie Banks home in the third with nobody on. That's number 308 in his career. George Altman home in the third with nobody on. Tony Gonzalez home in the third with two on. For the Phillies, George Altman hit another home run in the fifth with two men on for Chicago. And Ron Sando is home in the fifth with nobody on for the Chicago Cubs. Houston Colts 45 are playing San Francisco tonight, a latest start. At the end of six innings, the Cincinnati Reds won. Pittsburgh Pirates won. Bob Perkey against Harvey Haddix. Bill Verdon home in the third with nobody on. And the St. Louis Cards against the Los Angeles Dodgers late to start. The end of eight innings of play, the Minnesota Twins four and the New York Yankees three. Lee from Minnesota, Ford started for New York. Coach has relieved him. Harmon Killebrew home in the seventh with one on. The end of three and a half, the Baltimore Orioles three and the Chicago White Sox two. Fisher started against Pizarro. Andy has relieved Pizarro in the fourth inning. At the end of seven one half innings of play, the Washington Senators lead the Kansas City A's by a score of three to two. Fister started against Burnside. Wickersham has relieved Fister in the seventh inning. Here's the pitch to Roger Craig in there for a call strike one. Craig leading off for the New York Mets in the top half of the fifth inning. In Boston, at the end of five full innings of play, it's the Los Angeles Angels six and the Boston Red Sox four, and time has been called there because of rain. Here's the pitch outside to Craig for a ball. It's one and one. And at the end of seven and one half innings of play, it's the Cleveland Indians nine and the Detroit Tigers two. Dick Donovan has hit two home runs in that ball game. Willie Kirkland has hit one. Calavita has hit one. And Asijan has hit one. Swing and a miss by Craig. At the plate, it's one and two. Score tied here, 2-2 at Milwaukee's County Stadium. As left-hander Warren Spahn comes in with a pitch that misses low for ball two. It's two and two. Four inning totals for the New York Mets. Two runs on two hits, both of them home runs and one error. For the Milwaukee Braves, two runs on four hits and one error. Here's a 2-2 pitch from Spahn to Craig. Missing inside for a ball. It's three and two. Craig was hit by a pitch ball in the third inning and was on base. Jim Hickman is, in, uh, is the on-deck uh, hitter for the New York Mets. Ed Sudall is the umpire behind the plate this evening. Spawn into the windup, and here is the payoff pitch. Swung out and has a ground ball going to third base. Cut off by Minky. Throws across to Matthews on the ground. Pass Matthews against the barrier. Craig is on his way to second base. Torrey slips down as he tries to feel it, and Craig pulls up at second base. Well, Minky's throw was low, hit well out in front of Matthews, and Eddie Matthews, being unfamiliar with the position, did not stop that one from going on past it. He scored as an error, a throwing error on Dennis Minky. And so Roger Craig is on at second base. With nobody out, and leadoff man Jim Hickman coming up now for the New York Mets. In case you have joined us recently, Eddie Matthews is playing first base for the Milwaukee Braves tonight. The first time in, in his entire baseball career that he has ever played first base. And it was the unfamiliarity with the position that allowed that one to go right on past him and put Craig at second base. Hickman has been up twice. He walked me flat to right field on a 2-0 pitch. That was in the third inning after he had previously tried to sacrifice. Spawn into the stretch now. And here's the pitch as Hickman bunched down the third baseline. Minky plays the ball across to first base in time. Taken by Frank Bowling, the second baseman. And Roger Craig moves to third. Manager Casey Stingle electing to have Hickman sacrifice to move Craig to third base. The score is tied 2-2. The potential go-ahead run is now at third base, and Elio Chacon is coming up. The play on Hickman's sacrifice went 5-4 to four if you're scoring. Chacon fouled out behind the bag at third and walked. Nothing for one officially tonight. Warren Spahn working straight away now with a windup as Craig leads down the line at third. The pitch is low to Chacon and it's ball one. Joe Adcock is out of action for the Milwaukee Braves with a full thigh muscle. 
Tommy Aaron filled in, but he went 0 for 20 and was pulled out of the lineup by manager Bertie Tebbets. Last night, Dennis Menke played first base in Milwaukee's victory over Pittsburgh. But tonight, Menke was moved back to third and Matthews was played at first. Spawn again with the windup and the pitch. Swung on and popped up to short left field. McMillan is going back. Bedell is coming in calling and Bedell takes it just behind McMillan. No advance by Craig at third. Two men out. And Charlie Neal coming up. High pop into short left. McMillan went back and looked, but Bedell was coming on fast. He has a whirl of speed. He can move. Charlie Neal forced Hickman in the first inning and hit him to a double play in the third. He has nothing for two tonight, and Neal's batting average right now is 274 for the season. The Mets two and the Braves two. At County Stadium, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Going in a foul ball down the right field line and out of play. A warm night and a full moon here in Milwaukee. Full moon over County Stadium. Might be the words of a popular song. Not very popular, though. Frank Thomas has moved in the on-deck circle for the New York Mets. Spawn looks in to get the size from catcher Joe Torre as Craig leads down the line at third. Spawn is into the full windup. Here's the pitch to Charlie Neal. High and away. It's ball one. One and one. Mets have only two hits off Warren Spawn. Both of them home runs. One by Gil Hodges and one by Frank Thomas. Spawn looking for a career victory, 313 tonight. He has a 1-1 count to Charlie Neal. Here's the pitch. It goes high for ball two. 41-year-old Warren Spawn, born in Buffalo, New York, now lives in Hartshorn, Oklahoma. Here's a 2-1 pitch to Neal. In there for a call strike. It's 2-2. Spahn never won a Major League victory until he was 25 years old after he came back from overseas at the conclusion of World War II. 1946 was his first season and he won eight games that first season with the then Boston Braves. Here's a 2-2 pitch. Outside, Charlie Neal started to go and checked it in time. It's 3-2. and two. So we'll have a payoff pitch now. From Warren Spahn to Charlie Neal. In the top half of the fifth inning. Spahn takes a look over at Roger Craig, the base runner at third. Now looks in to get the sign. Pumps and pitches. Swung on the ground ball to the right side. Frank Bowling has it up with a place to Matthews at first in time, and Neal has ground it out to retire the side. He went out bowling to Matthews, and in the top half of the fifth inning, the New York Mets got no runs on no hits. There was one error, and there was one man left on base. So at the end of four and one half innings of play at Milwaukee's County Stadium, the score is the New York Mets two and the Milwaukee Braves two. Ever notice how a manager juggles his lineup until he comes up with a winner? He tries all his ball players and he moves them around until he finds the right men for the right positions. And then he sticks with them. That makes sense in cigarette smoking, too. Try all seven leading filter cigarettes and I'll bet your taste will tell you to stick with Viceroy. Because some cigarettes taste too strong. They might just as well not have a filter at all. And others taste too light. They take all the fun and flavor out of smoking. But when you smoke a Viceroy, you'll know you've come up with a winner. Because Viceroy is not too strong, not too light. Viceroy has got the taste that's right. If your filter cigarette is tasting too strong, don't you sometimes wonder if your brand is wrong? Well, Viceroy tastes the way you'd like a filter cigarette to taste. Not too strong. Not too light. Viceroy's got the taste that's right. That's right. That's right.
We'll be going now to the bottom half of the fifth inning. And Dennis Menke will be up to lead off for the Milwaukee Braves. Roger Craig has just arrived at the mound and started his warm-up tosses. Since he was on base at the conclusion of the last inning, he went on by the dugout to get refreshed a little bit before starting the inning. And so, uh, since he is still warming up, in order to allow our stations to identify themselves, we pause now for station identification. This is the General Electric Station in Schenectady, WGY, 810 on your radio dial. This is Lindsey Nelson with Bob Murphy and Ralph Kiner at Milwaukee's County Stadium as right-hand batter Dennis Minkey steps into the batter's box. He's been up one time and had a base hit, a single to left. Braves have a total of four hits thus far. Of Roger Craig, the starter who is still in there for the New York Mets in a ball game that is tied up 2-2 as we go to the bottom half of the fifth inning. As a pitch swung on and foul, out of play... Down the third baseline. It's a strike one count to the rookie third baseman of the Milwaukee Braves. New faces in the TP this season in Milwaukee. As a swing and a ground ball right back to Roger Craig. He gloves it and fires on to first base to Hodges in time. And Dennis Minkey has grounded out Craig to Hodges. One away, and Warren Spahn is coming up. He has been up one time, and he flied out to right field. And he's getting a hand, as usual, here in Milwaukee. But, of course, this fellow gets a hand almost everywhere he goes. Well, he should. One of baseball's great ones, Warren Spahn. Roger Craig. Misses, knocks him down. And now, that sends Ed Sudol, the umpire, out to warn Roger Craig. And he is also walking over toward the Mets dugout now. That one had uh, Warren Spahn ducking. He hit the dirt. It missed everything. Coming right on back. So umpire Ed Sudol goes over now to relay a similar warning to Casey Single. Craig himself was hit by a pitch ball earlier in the ballgame. Warren Spahn hit Craig in the back in the third inning. And he, uh, he had Warren moving around that time. Heading for shelter. Here's a final score. The Minnesota Twins have defeated the New York Yankees by a score of 4-3. to three. For Minnesota, four runs, 12 hits, no errors. For the Yankees, three runs, seven hits, no error. Winning pitcher Lee and the loser, Whitey Ford. Pitch misses outside. Two balls to count now. Spawn is a left-hand batter. He's a left-hander all the way. 2-0 pitch. And it's swung on and that's a fly ball to right field. Gus Bell stands right there and makes the catch. Ball was well hit by Spawn, swinging on 2-0, but he flied out to Bell and right. Two men out, nobody on. And Howie Bedell is coming up. Dell is one for two tonight. Left-hand batter. Greg into the windup, and the pitch is in there for a call. Strike one. The senior umpire in this particular quartet tonight is Tom Gorman, who is working at second base. Two dollars behind the plate. Al Foreman is at first. Gorman at second, and Bill Joukowsky is around at third. The ground ball punch to short. Chacon has it. He plays over the first in time and got him by a step. That Bedell moves in a hurry. But Hodges stretched out to assist the throw, and Bedell has grounded out. From Chacon to Hodges, and in the bottom half of the fifth inning, the Braves got no runs on, no hits, no errors. And nobody left on base. And so at the end of five full innings to play in Milwaukee, the score is Mets two and the Braves two. Well, 
Tavern owners all over town have dusted off their welcome mats and given their glasses a little extra shine. Yes, sir, they're all set to welcome you during National Tavern Month with the same friendly hospitality they show all year round. So be sure to drop into your neighborhood tavern soon. Plenty of relaxing atmosphere and always on tap, plenty of cold, refreshing Rheingold Extra Dry. Rheingold is beer as beer should taste. And dry tells you why. It tells you that Rheingold is brewed the long, slow, costly way for a taste that's brisk and bright and clean, clear through. What better way to salute National Tavern Month than with a glass or two of Rheingold Extra Dry. Enjoy some today. Well, the grounds crew is out to clean up the infield a little bit in accordance with National League rules at the end of five innings. And here is a final score in the American League. The Cleveland Indians have defeated the Detroit Tigers by a score of 9-2. to two. For Cleveland, nine runs on nine hits and one error. For Detroit, two runs, five hits and two errors. Winning pitcher is Dick Donovan, who now has won seven games and lost none for Cleveland. And Paul Foytak was the loser for Detroit. So tonight, the Cleveland Indians have won and the New York Yankees have lost. And the New York Mets here in the top half of the sixth inning are sending up Frank Thomas. In the fourth inning, he had a homer. He flied to left in the first, deep to left field. Spawn pitches in there for a call strike on the inside corner to Frank Thomas. Thomas and Spawn during batting practice had quite a time barbering with each other. Thomas was with the Milwaukee Braves last year, of course. Pitch goes high and away. Vaughn kept yelling from the dugout to the batting practice pitcher, in on his fist, in on his fist. One ball and one strike to count to Frank Thomas. Swing and a miss. A pitch that was low and inside. It's one and two now. In case you've joined us along the way, the Mets have only two hits off wire and spawn. Both were home runs, one by Gil Hodges and one by Frank Thomas. Here's the pitch, swung on, and foul right down into the dirt. It's out of play. Joe Torrey comes over to retrieve it. Gives it to Ed Sudol, and he puts another ball in play, throwing that one out. Gil Hodges in the on-deck circle, giving his bat the pine tar treatment with the pine tar rag. This is a 1-2 pitch that's on the way. Swung on, a ground ball, full foul. Salahima started over the field. It let it go by. Count holds it, one ball and two strikes to Frank Thomas. And here's a final score in the American League. The Washington Senators have defeated the Kansas City Athletics by a score of 3-2. For Washington, three runs on only four hits and no errors. For Kansas City, two runs on seven hits and one error. The winning pitcher, Pete Burnside, and Fister took the loss. 1-2 pitch on the way to Thomas. He takes it high for a ball two. Frank Thomas is leading off here for the New York Mets in the top half of the sixth inning. Keep in mind that the Mets will be home again on Memorial Day at the Polo Grounds against the Los Angeles Dodgers. Change of speed and there's a ground ball fielded by Minky at third. He fires on to Matthews at first in time and he's out. Matthews had to stretch a little. He kept one foot anchored. And stretched out to haul that one in. A uh, little tentative about the way he took it, but he did take it for the out. And that brings up Gil Hodges. Thomas grounding out. Dennis Minkin to Eddie Matthews, third to first. Hodges has been up twice. He's been on both times. He had a home run in the second inning. He was on on Minkin's throwing error in the fourth inning. And when Bell fly deep to center, Hodges tagged up at first and moved on to second. First time that the Mets have been able to tag up at first and move on on an outfield fly this season. Gil Hodges are running well now. Pitch is in there for a call strike. Screwball caught the outside corner. Hodges uh, does not show any effects of the jam knee now. He has asked that umpire Tudal look at the ball. He does, and Tudal throws that one out. Fires another one on out to Warren Spawn. Outfield shaded around toward left on Gil Hodges. It's in there for a call strike. That one coming inside. So it's 0-2 now to Hodges. Got an inside corner with that one. 
The home run that Hodges hit in the top half of the second was number 366 in his career. The man who hit more home runs than any other right-hand batter in the history of the National League is up here in the broadcasting booth, Ralph Kiner. His mark, 369. Swing and a foul ball coming back. So Gil Hodges is now up to 366 as he moves up on the record established by Ralph Kiner. The only right-hand batter in Major League history to hit more home runs than Kiner, Jimmy Fox of the American League. Pitch is low and away to Gil Hodges. It's one and two. Hodges going through his usual ritual, checking the helmet, running his hand down along the big end of the bat. As Warren Spahn is into the windup and the pitch. Swung on as a drive down the left field line, and it is a foul ball. A couple of feet foul down the left field line. That brings Gil Hodges back. The count holds at one ball and two strikes to him. There is one man out and nobody on base for the Mets. Batting in the top half of the sixth inning of a ball game that is tied 2-2. This is the opening game of a four-game set. A single game tomorrow afternoon. Game time, 2.30 New York time. We'll be on the air as usual at 2.25 New York time. And then a doubleheader on Sunday. Spawn with a windup and the pitch to Hodges. Change of speed and there's a ground ball foul. Down past Sally Hemus coaching at third. Fielded by a spectator in the front row. Down beyond the Mets dugout. The Mets, of course, use the dugout along the third baseline here. And the Milwaukee Braves, the home team, using the dugout along the first baseline. Pitches inside to Hodges. It's two and two now as he took that one. Turned his body but did not bring the bat through. The largest crowd of the season here in Milwaukee was opening day, uh, slightly over 30,000. Felix Mantilla is on deck for the Mets. As Spawn looks in to get a sign from catcher Joe Torre, has it now. Here's a 2-2 pitch. Swung on and has a fly ball to left field. Howie Bedell moves over. He's underneath waiting. And he takes it for the out. Hodges with a high fly ball. Here's the second out, and Felix Mantilla comes up. He was hit by a pitch ball and fouled out to the catcher. Henry Aaron has been out there in center field practically all season for the Milwaukee Braves. And there's a fly ball going deep to the left. Center Bedell off and running, going back now near the wiring track. And he takes it over his shoulder and leans up against the wall out there between the 360 and the 392 side to retire the side as Mantilla flies out deep to left field. Now, Howie Bedell taking it in left center. And the Mets are out in order in the top half of the sixth with no runs on, no hits, no errors, and nobody left. And at the end of five and one half innings of play, the score is the New York Mets, two, and the Milwaukee Braves, two. Now, here's your chance to enjoy 60 seconds of uninterrupted music brought to you by New York's favorite beer, Rheingold Extra Dry.
Roy McMillan is at the plate, and here comes Roger Craig's pitch. Swung on and fouled off. It's strike one to McMillan. Leading off for the Braves here in the bottom half of the sixth inning. McMillan has been up twice. He struck out and flied to left. The score is tied, 2-2. Felix Mantia, shaded way over toward the line on McMillan. Pitch is tight to him. And it's 2-1. And, and Elio Chacon has moved over in the hole between short and third. On right-hand batter, Roy McMillan. Roger Craig's pitch. Down low. It's 2-1. Taking a moment to get the sign here from catcher Hobie Landreth. Swung on a ground ball taken by Mantilla. Back of the bag. The throw over to first in time. And Hodges tags him. Hodges pulled off a little bit and he simply tagged uh, McMillan as he went by. And Mantilla, playing near the line, was in perfect position because the ball was hit very near the bag. McMillan is out. And coming up now is Mac Jones. Jones has been up twice, and he struck out both times. Watching him hit in batting practice, Warren Spahn was saying that this fellow gets more power to the opposite field than any batter he's seen lately. He checked that one and took it for ball one. Started the swing, and then as the ball dipped down into the dirt, he checked it, and umpire Ed Sudol says it's ball one. Eddie Matthews has moved into the on-deck circle for the Milwaukee Braves. We're in the bottom half of the sixth inning. Craig's pitch is high and away. It's ball two. Mac Jones, the right fielder. Mac Jones was stuck in the right field at the start of the season simply because Lee May at the time was uh, ill. But uh, he has done so well out there that he's practically taken over. And Lee May, in the meantime, has been placed on the disabled list. Jones is hitting 311 right now. Swinging a ground ball, going to shortstop. Chacon charges it, one hands it, throws on the run. Not in time, he beat it out. And Chacon fielded that one as fast as you could have fielded that ball. He came down on the run, gloved it, and then fired on the run to Gil Hodges, who stretched out to give it as much help as possible. But Mike Jones, long-legged left hand to beat it out, and Eddie Matthews is coming up. That is the first hit for the Milwaukee Braves since the second inning. They now have a total of five off Roger Craig. They had one hit in the first inning, three in the second, and then Craig blanked them in the third, fourth, and fifth. There is one man out, the runner at first. Left hand batter Eddie Matthews has flied to center and struck out. Craig is into the stretch position, tosses over to first. Mac Jones getting back safely. The score is tied, 2-2. Two, two. Three of the four runs that have been scored were home runs. Go to first, and he gets by Hodges. Goes over against the wire, and Jones is at second. He's turning second, and heading to third. Hodges up with the ball, a four across the diamond, not in time. And Mac Jones has gone all the way to third base. An attempted pickoff play that went awry, and it has moved Mac Jones from first to third. It's an error on Craig on the throw. An error on Craig. Roger Craig and Gil Hodges trying for a pickoff. But that one got by and went on down to the wire barrier in front of the box seat. And Jones took his turn at second and kept right on going. Hodges made the long throw to Mantilla, but simply not in time to get him. No count is yet to Matthews. So with one man out, Craig is in trouble, and the New York Mets pull the infield in, hoping for a play at the plate. Going tied 2-2. Craig with a wind-up right back. He holds the runner. He throws to first in time. He's out. No advance. A big out there for Roger Craig as he got Eddie Matthews on a comebacker. That will bring up Henry Aaron. Aaron Homer in the second inning. Mike Bowling scored the other run for the Braves in the second inning. 
Lee Singham, and then Jimmy Pinky. And the sharp single out in the left center, and Jim Hickman and Frank Thomas had a little trouble on the ball, and Hickman was charged with an error as Bowling came on to score on the play. Both of the New York runs coming as the result of home runs, one by Gil Hodges and one by Frank Thomas. And that's where we are right now with the score tied 2-2. Two men out for the Braves now. Mac Jones, the base runner at third, and Henry Aaron coming up. He lined out to Mantilla last time up. It's just outside. Ball one to Henry Aaron. Henry has been in something of a batting slump, but he is still always dangerous at the plate. He has a season batting average of 279, including six home runs and 17 runs batted in. It's in there for a call strike. One ball and one strike. Here's Craig's pitch. Going high for ball two. In the on-deck circle, Joe Torrey. Or the Milwaukee Braves. Roger Craig has a sign from Hobie Landis. Gives a big affirmative nod. Goes into the windup to pitch way outside. Three balls and one strike now to Aaron. Philadelphia Phillies have scored four runs. In the bottom half of the seventh inning to go ahead of the Chicago Cubs. They're putting Aaron on. I'm taking the chances with a 3-1 pitch. They elected to put him on, uh, and he goes down to first base. That is the first walk issued by Roger Craig, an intentional pass uh, coming after he got out 3-1. And that brings up catcher Joe Torre. He has been up twice and grounded out both times. Grounded out third to first, grounded out short to first. Two men out, runners at first and third. The Phillies have gone ahead of the Cubs by a score of 8-7 at the end of seven innings of play. Balsham and White on the batteries for Philadelphia in that ball game, going to the eighth. Right hand batter Joe Torre hitting 249. Watches a curveball in there for a call, strike one. Roger Craig's control has been sharp tonight. calls time, walks down off the mound and calls Hobie Landreth out mops his brow at the same time, takes off his cap mops his brow with his uh, sleeve now they are calling Charlie Neal into this conference at the mound Landreth, Neal and Craig last year's affiliations two Dodgers and a Giant And now they return to their positions with the strike one count to Joe Torrey at the plate. Mac Jones leads at third. Henry Aaron leads at first for the Milwaukee Braves. Score tied, 2-2. Craig checks and deals. Low and away. Landris getting out there to block it. And the count is one and one now. To the Brooklyn-born Joe Torrey, younger brother of Frank Torrey, who formerly played here at Milwaukee for the Braves and is currently with the Philadelphia Phillies. Here's the pitch swung on. It's a ground ball to third. Man, Tia had to place to Charlie Neal for the force on the side as we tired. So Joe Torrey forced Henry Aaron as the play went from Felix Mantia to Charlie Neal. And in the bottom half of the sixth inning, the Milwaukee Braves got no runs on one hit, an infield hit. There were no errors and two men left on base. And so at the end of six full innings of play, the score is the New York Mets two and the Milwaukee Braves two. And coming in here right now, Mr. Robert Murphy. Thank you very much, Lindsay. We'll be going along to the seventh inning now of a real good ball game on an ideal night out in Milwaukee. <laughs> Warren Spahn throwing in his warm-up tosses. And we'll be going along to the seventh inning. They're in the eighth inning in Philadelphia now. The Phillies leading the Chicago Cubs eight to seven. 
George Altman has hit two homers in that game. That would be his seventh and eighth of the year. Ernie Banks belted another one, number 308 for Ernie. Tony Gonzalez and Ron Sano have homered. They're in the last half of the eighth inning in Pittsburgh with the Reds leading the Pirates 4-1 to one as Bob Perkey goes for his seventh one of the year without a loss. Here are the warm-ups on the West Coast at Dodger Stadium. Larry Jackson for the Cardinals and Johnny Padres for the Dodgers. In the American League, it's all over at Yankee Stadium. The Minnesota Twins on a two-run homer by Harmon Killebrew in the seventh inning beat the Yankees 4-3. to three. Lee the winner and Whitey Ford the loser. At the end of six, the Orioles and the White Sox tied 3-3. Jack Fisher for the Birds. Dom Zanny relieved Juan Bizarro in the fourth. Now Gus Bell is up, and the pitch is in there. Strike one call. Gus put the center fielder, Henry Aaron, right up against the fence and straight away center to take his long outfield fly his last time up. Bell 0 for 2 in the game. Warren Spahn out of his wind up the pitch. A foul ball back up toward our broadcasting booth. It'll be out of play. We have three final scores in the American League. Minnesota beat the Yankees 4 to 3. Washington down Kansas City at 3 to 2. Burnside winning the mound duel from Dan Fister. And Cleveland beat Detroit 9 to 2. A five hitter for Dick Donovan. He's now won seven, lost none. And Donovan. The slider expert from Quincy, Mass, hit two homers in the game. Fouled, back upstairs and out of play. Two-strike count on Gus Bell. Two strikes to Gus. Hobie Landreth on deck and then Roger Craig. Spawn out of his windup. Now the pitch. In the dirt, no damage done, nobody on. One ball and two strikes. Over the years, Gus has fared well against Warren Spahn. Last four or five years, one of the real big pitches for Warren has been his screwball, a pitch he doesn't use when he's up against a left-hand hitter. He relies on fastballs and sliders to get them out. The one-two pitch, a line drive right at Frank Bowling. He grabs it for the out. Bell tonight is hitting in his share of tough luck. He hit a shoulder high line drive directly to Frank Bowling. One away and nobody on. Here's Hobie Landreth coming up. Last three base hits. The New York Mets have collected off Warren Spahn have been home runs. Warren out of his windup pitches. A breaking ball over a strike on the outside corner. That would include the ninth inning home run hit by Hobie Landreth that won a game last Saturday at the Polo Grounds in the ninth inning. And the two hits in tonight's game, home runs by Gil Hodges and Frank Thomas. A little off the outside corner, one ball and one strike. Remember now, it's a day game tomorrow. Rookie Cecil Butler to hurl for the Milwaukee Braves, and Jay Hook will be on the mound for the New York Mets. Pitching one and one. Curve outside and low, two and one. Bob Miller and Jay Hook combined to give the New York Mets eight scoreless innings of relief in their thrilling Wednesday afternoon victory over the Chicago Cubs. A game one in 11 innings by the Mets as they swept the two-game series, both extra inning ball games. Pitching two and one. Bounced foul, no play. Two and two. Now Hobie wants Ed Sudol to get another ball to put in play. Ed Sudol, umpiring behind the plate tonight. Big Ed was born and raised in Passaic, New Jersey. His dad still lives there, but Ed now lives in Daytona Beach, Florida during the offseason. Spawn winds and pitches. Outside, ball three, and the string is out. Three and two to Hobie Landra.
Infield and the outfield straight away against Hobie. And the payoff pitch to him is driven foul off to the left and out of play, and it stays the same. This is the nicest night we have seen all season. You just couldn't ask for a better night for a ball game. And a real but good ball game to match it. The day game tomorrow will be starting at 2.30. Eastern Daylight Time will be on the air at 2.25. Now Joe Torrey, out of the crouch, sets up the target. The payoff pitch, a high pop-up down the left field line in foul ground. Chasing it is Menke, the third baseman, near the field boxes. He has no play. He tried to go up on the tarp and drape himself over the railing to get a play, but it was beyond his reach. Two to Hobie Landreth. Jim Hickman out in the circle. Roger Craig will be up next. Spawn pitching three and two. A line drive into right field for a base hit by Hobie Landreth. Mac Jones, the right fielder, whipping the ball back in. And there's base hit number three in the game for the New York Mets. That'll bring up Roger Craig. Roger was hit by a pitch in the third inning. Raced all the way to second on a throwing error. Charged to Dennis Menke, the third baseman, in the fifth inning. Phoenix Mantilla, early in the game, was hit by a pitch. And then Craig was hit by a pitch in the third. So when Warren Spahn was up to hit in the fifth inning, he had to hit the dirt to get out of the way of a pitch. And Ed Sudol went out to the mound to warn Roger, which probably means it'll cost him 50. They look for the bunt. He squares around, and the pitch is in there for a call strike. You can bet Roger won't mind a bit if he can win this ball game. Now Craig checking with Sally Hemus. Eddie Matthews ready to come up the line. And now Warren Spahn wants to talk to his buddy Eddie Matthews. Eddie playing a new position. So they want to... Go over it and be sure they have everything straight in their own mind. Out in the bullpen now for the Milwaukee Braves, fidgety Lou Burdett is starting to warm up. Burdett, who has been on the sidelines with an ankle injury, back in action now. He worked in relief against the Pittsburgh Pirates, and he's ready to go. Lou Burdett warming up. Throw to first, and it's not in time. Obi Landreth on first, one down. We're in the top of the seventh inning. The game tied two to two. The Mets took the lead on a home run by Hodges. Then the Braves got two to lead, and Frank Thomas tied it with a home run. Throw to first. Obi has to dive back in head first. Warren Spahn really going to work now on base runner Hobie Landra. Now Hobie is well aware of what the conversation was when Matthews was called over to talk to Spahn. Craig swings away and bounces the ball foul. He was choking up on the bat as though he were going to turn around and bunt. Then took the half swing but fouls it off. Bond trying to keep Landreth very close to have a chance for a force play at second in the event of a bunt. Now let's see if they have it. Roger Craig trying to bunt the two-strike pitch. Spahn into the stretch. Throw to first. Hobie gets back. Braves two runs on five hits. Mets two runs on three hits. And the pitch. He's around the bunt and strikes out. Craig trying to bunt the third strike, misses it, and is a strikeout victim. Now before Jim Hickman comes up to hit, let's pause for station identification.
This is WGY 10 on your radio dial, Schenectady. With Lindsey Nelson and Ralph Cantor from County Stadium in Milwaukee. Good one going, tied 2-2. We're in the seventh. Jim Hickman has drawn a walk, flyed to right, and sacrificed to turn it back, trying to help build a run. Right hand hitter waiting. Ball one outside and low. Kick of the leg. Around comes the left arm, and the slider is swung and missed. One ball, one strike. Game five of the year between the Mets and the Braves. They divided the four games at the Polo Grounds in New York. And this is the opener of a 12-game road trip that consists of 10 days. Mets play two doubleheaders on this road trip, one here on Sunday, and the following Sunday at Candlestick Park in San Francisco. Pitch to Hickman, a ground ball slashed towards short, fielded by McMillan. He flips to Frank Bowling for the force play to retire the side. So the Mets are out in their half of the seventh inning. No runs, one hit, no errors, and one left on. Seventh inning stretch time in Milwaukee, and the score at the end of six and a half. The New York Mets, two, and the Milwaukee Braves, two. Seventh inning stretch again. Well, the folks here are all getting up to stretch. Ralph, I wonder what the folks back in New York are doing. Well, Bob, that's really easy. I bet a good many of them are stretching out for glasses of Rhine Gold Extra Dry. True enough. It comes to the seventh inning or any inning, more fans stretch out for Rhine Gold than any other beer. Well, there's a reason for that, Bob. Rhine Gold is New York's favorite beer. And it's easy to see why. In fact, dry tells you why. Yes, sir, Extra Dry tells you why Rhine Gold is beer as beer should taste. Brisk and bright and clean, clear through. Rhine Gold is brewed of the choicest ingredients. Brewed the long, slow, costlier way. And that's what makes Rhine Gold Extra Dry such a wonderful beer. Wonderful because it's so much more refreshing. And more refreshing because it's extra dry. Right, Ralph? That's right, Bob. And say, folks, why don't you enjoy a fine cold glass of Rhine Gold right along with the diamond doings? Join the millions who say, my beer is Rhine Gold the dry beer. Now the Milwaukee Braves have Frank Bowling to lead off in the last half of the seventh inning. Bowling hitting at 298. Has one for two in the ninth game. He singled off Craig back in the second inning. Fine pitching duel going. The wind-up pitch by Craig. He bumps down a third base line. Craig hurrying to it. Throws hard in the dirt. Can't be he gets by Charlie Neal, and all the way to second goes Frank Bowling. Beautiful bunt by Frank Bowling. Craig knew he had to give it everything he had. He came off the mound, running to the line, made a bare hand pickup, whirled and threw all of the same motion. And in trying to get too much on the throw, he threw it low and away. Neal, who was really hustling, trying to get over there to back up on the play, had the ball bound too far away from him. It'll be a throwing error on the play charged against Roger Craig. The only thing flashed on the scoreboard thus far is the error against Craig. We'll wait and see whether they scored an error all the way or one and one. And so the Braves have a tie-breaking run on second. Nobody out, and the hitter is Dennis Menke. It'll be an error all the way on Roger Craig. Official scoring figures he could have had him with a good throw. Pitches inside the high as he squared around to bunt. Menke squared around a bunt, and then had to hit the dirt to get out of the way. Anytime the situation calls for a bunt, the pitcher tries to keep that ball high and tight with plenty on it to make it hard to lay down. Now Craig looking in to get his sign from Hobie. Gil Hodges and Felix Mantilla looking for the bunt. A pickoff play. Throw to second, not in time. And a high peg by Roger Craig that Elio Chacon had to go up to grab. Roger Craig in a tough situation now. Runner on second, nobody out. Bottom half of the seventh. This time a whirl but no throw by Roger Craig as Elio Chacon wants to keep Frank Bowling as close to that base as he can to give the Mets a chance to get him a third. 
Now the stretch by Craig. Pickoff play. Throw to second. Not in time. He slides back in. And Roger Craig and Elio Chacon really go to work on Frank Bowling trying to nail him to second. Gil Hodges starting up the line now. Here's the pitch. Swing and a foul ball back. No play. They took the bunt off and let Dennis Benke swing away. And the count is even now. One ball, one strike. Now, Hobie Landreth walking out toward the mound to talk to Craig. This has been a good ball game, despite the fact that five errors have been charged. Mets have drawn three, and the Braves have drawn two. But both pitchers, Craig and Spahn, have pitched very well. Here's the pitch. Full swing and a foul ball back toward the upper deck. It's out of play. And now it's one ball and two strikes on the third baseman, Dennis Menke. Menke has one for two in the game. He's singled in the second. Henry Aaron knocked in the first run tonight for the Braves with a home run, his sixth round tripper of the year. The second run came in as the result of an outfield error. For the New York Mets, both runs coming in on homers hit by Gil Hodges and Frank Thomas. We'll have a complete rundown of all the other scores for you at the end of the inning. Now Roger Craig, normally a very fast worker on the mound, pitching in a tough spot, takes a little more time. And the pitch. He struck him out, swinging. Minke goes down swinging. That brings up Warren Spahn. Five strikeouts in the game for Roger Craig, and here's Spahn. Spahn, a good hitter, has been up twice, and both times fly to right. The wind, not as strong now as it was earlier in the ballgame, and it's been blowing in from right field against the left-hand hitters. But it has subsided considerably since the first three innings. Outfield swung around to right, figuring Spahn to pull. Pitch by Craig. Foul tip. No play in the count. Strike one. The New York Mets have won six of their last eight ball games. Games won and lost. They have climbed past the Houston Colt 45s. They're hoping to get off to a successful start on this 12-game trip here in Milwaukee tonight. Mets come back home on the 30th. For a doubleheader with the Dodgers, followed by a single night game with the Dodgers, then the big weekend series with the Giants. Then they go out on the road again briefly and open a long homestand on June 15th. Fouled down the first baseline by Spani on the count two strikes. Spun behind on the count now, two strikes. Frank Bowling on second, one man down. Howie Bedell up next. Swing and a miss. He struck him out. Craig fanning Spun on three pitches. He got him with a fastball. He had it off the outside corner, and Spun went after it. And that's six strikeouts for Roger Craig and brings up Howie Bedell, the left fielder. Bedell singled in the first, stole second, was left stranded there. He popped a short in the second and grounded out short to first in the fifth inning. He has tremendous running speed, and any time he bounces that ball across the left side of the infield, it puts a lot of pressure on the shortstop and the third baseman. They can't waste a moment. Way outside, a good stab by Hobie Landreth. One ball and no strikes to the left-handed batting Howie Bedell. He's a line drive type hitter. Chokes up on the handle of the bat. Jim Hickman playing Bedell to hit the ball to the opposite field. 
A fly ball to straightaway center. Centering in is Jim Hickman. He's there and puts it away for the out. Fine pitching performance by Roger Craig. Under pressure, he struck out Dennis Menke and Warren Spahn and then gets Howie Bedell on an easy fly ball to center field. No runs, no hits, one error, one left on. And so at the end of seven, the score, the Mets two and the Milwaukee Braves two. Now let's have a check on all the scores of the other ball games. In the National League, they're in the ninth inning now in Philadelphia. And that game is now tied up eight to eight. Cubs eight and the Phillies eight going into the ninth inning. Altman has homered twice. Ernie Banks, Tony Gonzalez, Ron Sano, and Bob Will have all homered. That home run by Will in the eighth inning tying the game at eight to eight after the Phillies had gone in front by getting four in the seventh inning. The warm-ups at San Francisco, Ken Johnson for Houston, Jack Sanford for the Giants. They're in the last of the ninth inning in Pittsburgh now with the Pirates trailing the Reds four to one as Perky tries for his seventh. It's Jackson against Padres warming up for the Cardinal Dodger game on the coast. In the American League, the Twins beat the Yankees 4-3 on Killebrew's seventh inning homer with a man on. Lee, the winner, Ford, the loser. Washington beat Kansas City 3-2, Burnside winning over Dan Fister. Dick Donovan won number seven without a setback as he hit two home runs, and Cleveland down Detroit 9-2. In uncompleted games in the American League, the Orioles have gone ahead of the White Sox 4-3 at the end of seven. Elio Chacon up against Warren Spahn, and the pitch is over at the knees for a call strike. In the other uncompleted American League ball game, the Angels lead the Red Sox 7-4 at the end of 7. That game was held up for a while because of rain. He's around a bunt, doesn't offer at it. It's inside, one ball, one strike. Elio 0 for 2 in tonight's game, is fouled out to third, drawn a walk, and flying to short left. The Mets have been held to three hits over seven by Warren Spahn. Swing and a miss. Looked like the screwball in the count one and two. Warren Spahn and Roger Craig hooked up in a fine pitching duel last Saturday at the Polo Grounds, and they are repeating it here tonight. The one-two pitch. Ground ball hit down to third, fielded by Dennis Menke. He straightens up, throws to Matthews, in time, and Chacon is out. Charlie Neal has reached on a fielder's choice, grounded into a double play, and been thrown out by the second baseman, Frank Bowling. So Charlie hitting at 271 is 0 for 3. The Mets have been held to three hits. Home runs by Gil Hodges and Frank Thomas, and a right field single by Hobie Landreth. Outside and low. One ball, no strikes. Jay hooked for the Mets tomorrow against rookie Cecil Butler, who pitched a strong game against the Mets in New York on Sunday. Swing and a miss. One ball, one strike to Charlie Neal. Frank Thomas in the on-deck circle, working with the pine tar cloth and the rosin bag. Tighten up that bat grip. The 1-1 pitch. Just missed at the letters. Two balls and a strike to Charlie Neal. It's all over in Pittsburgh now. Cincinnati beat the Pirates 4-1 on a six-hitter by Bob Perkey. The 2-1 pitch. In there for a strike, two and two. So Bob Perkey, off to a tremendous start, has now won seven and lost none. Cleveland's Dick Donovan, winning the night, has now won seven and lost none. Two-two delivery, a swung and missed, he struck him out. Second strikeout for Warren Spahn. Two outs and nobody on. Frank Thomas coming up. Frank lined out to the left fielder in the first, then hit a line drive home run his second time up. For Frank, that was his ninth homer of the year, and he was thrown out by the third baseman, Dennis Menke, in the sixth inning. Frank, a pole hitter who stands close to that plate. Three times up tonight, he's pulled the ball all three times and pulled it close to the line.
Spahn out of his windup delivers. Hammered down the third baseline, a foul ball. Snagged across the line by Dennis Menke. Thomas hitting 303 with nine home runs and 21 runs batted in. They swing the defense way around to left. The pitch by Spahn, a little bit inside, one ball, one strike. Thomas stands so close to that plate that any time a pitch is inside, he has to move to keep from being hit by it. Pitching one and one. Inside and low ball, two, two and one. Milwaukee, two runs on five hits and two errors. The Mets, two runs, three hits and three errors. Two one delivery. Hit foul down the third baseline, a curve that he went after. And now it's two and two. Menke getting a good workout behind third on feeling those ground balls pulled down that way by Frank Thomas. Top of the eighth inning, the game tied up two to two. Warren into his windup. The pitch, strike three called, tipped on the inside corner. And the eighth inning is a strong one for Warren Spahn as he fans two of the three. No runs, no hits, no errors, none left on. At the end of seven and a half, the score, it's the Mets two and the Braves two. And now a word from Viceroy Cigarettes. I've been out with my truck for a week on the road and was heading on home with a ten-ton load. The trip was long. It felt good to get back. Then I went for a smoke and found an empty pack. I asked for my brand at a diner I know. The man said, All out of yours, try these, Joe. Now, I only smoke filters, but these were too light. Then a cute little waitress uh, set things right. She said, Viceroy tastes the way you'd like a filter cigarette to taste. Not too strong. Not too light. Viceroy's got the taste that's right. That's right. Uh, that's right. That's, that's right. right. Now I smoke Viceroy, and it must be fate, because that waitress and I have a wedding date. <laughs> ah, that's right. So now I know when I'll take all bets. If you smoke all seven filter cigarettes, you'll find some too strong. Some too light. But Viceroy's got the taste that's right. That's right. <laughs> that's right. That's, that's right. That's right. <laughs> In the last of the eighth inning, the Braves have two, three, and four in their batting order coming in against Roger Craig. Roy McMillan batting second in the order is 0 for 3 in the game. Right hand hitter, feet close together, count tailing that bat around. The pitch by Craig is whacked foul. It's up toward the upper deck and out of play and to the right. Roger Craig on the mound for the New York Mets. Roger has walked only one, and that was an intentional pass to Hank Aaron. Struck out six men. Ball one. When Craig walked Aaron, it was the first walk he had given up in 14 innings. Roger has struck out 17 men in the last 18 innings that he has worked. Here's the windup pitch to McMillan, and it goes behind him. That one got away from Craig and came in behind Roy McMillan. Two balls and one strike. In that slugfest in Philadelphia, the Chicago Cubs scored three in the top of the ninth. They now lead the Phillies 11 to 8. The game has gone back and forth. Cubs tied it up on Wills Homer in the eighth, and they've gone in front with three in the ninth. The Cubs have really started to hit of late. They've been having their pitching problems, but they were having hitting problems, but they broke out over the last weekend in a series against the Phillies, and they've been hitting well ever since. Pitching two and one. Strike call two and two to Roy McMillan.
Nobody on, nobody out. We're in the last half of the eighth inning with the game tied, two and two. Hickman shaded toward left center against Roy McMillan. Now the pitch. A ground ball past the mound. Neal racing to his right, can't reach it. It's a base hit into center field. And so the Braves have the leadoff batter on in the last of the eighth inning. And they've got their big guns coming up in Mac Jones, Eddie Matthews, and Henry Aaron. That is the sixth hit given up by Craig. And it brings up the right fielder, Mac Jones. Jones has one for three. He beat out an infield hit to short in the sixth inning. Jones hitting at 315. Young player with a lot of power. The last two years played at AAA with Louisville. He was over 300 both years. Now Craig in pitching position delivers. Full swing and a miss strike one. They have Jones swinging away. Bertie Tebbets has his big bats coming up. Warm-up action for the Mets now. Wilmer Vinegar, Ben Mizell, a left-hander, and Bob Miller, a right-hander, warming up. They look for the ball, a high fly, hit deep to left field by Jones. It is up, and there it goes, a home run. Jones, the right fielder, who has a lot of power to the opposite field, hit a tremendous home run up toward the top of the bleachers in left field. And the Braves go out in front 4-2 to two in the last half of the eighth inning. That for Mac Jones is his fifth of the year. Inside to Eddie Matthews, ball one. Four home runs in tonight's game. The Mets have hit two and the Braves have hit two. And that was a big one for the Braves, hit by Mac Jones. He never gave any sign at all of Bunny. He was up there swinging. A high drive hit deep to right field by Matthews. It is going, going, it is gone. A home run. Number seven of the year for Eddie Matthews, and that was a tremendous homer. A high fly that carried a long way and went about halfway up in the bleachers in right field against the wind. So three hits in a row by the Milwaukee Braves in the last of the eighth inning, and they now spring to a three-run lead, going out in front five to two. For Eddie Matthews, the 377th of his career. Henry Aaron up, the pitch is over, strike one. Here's the wind-up pitch by Craig, outside and low. One ball, one strike. Roger Craig, who had kept the Milwaukee Braves in check. Over seven innings, running into the big guns in the last half of the eighth inning. Aaron waiting. Ground ball hammered towards short, fielded by Elio Chacon. He strides and throws in time. Aaron retired on the grounder to short. So it's one away, nobody on in the last of the eighth inning, and Joe Torrey comes up. Torrey hitless and three times up. Three runs in in the last of the eighth inning. Braves lead now five to two. Outside and low, it's ball one. The Mets in their ninth inning will have Hodges, Mantilla, and Bell coming up against Bond. Taken in off the hip. Ball two, two and oh to Joe Torrey. Two home runs hit by the left-hand power hitters, Mac Jones and Eddie Matthews. Jones to the opposite field. Matthews pulled his to right. Swing and a miss on a breaking ball. Two and one to Joe Torre.
Now Craig with a flick of the glove. Now is in agreement. Winds and pitches. Sweeps in there, bending over for a call strike. Two and two. A day game tomorrow and a doubleheader Sunday will be on the air with tomorrow's game at 2.25 Eastern Daylight Time. Fouled off the fist, back up into the crowd, and the count stays at 2-2 on Joe Torre. Five home runs tonight, three for Milwaukee, two for New York. Now the 2-2 pitch. Swing and a miss, he struck him out. Strikeout number seven for Roger Craig as he fans Joe Torrey. Two outs and nobody on. Frank Bowling coming up. Bowling one for three. Frank hitting at 295 on the year. This game had been tied since the top of the fourth inning when Frank Thomas tied it up with a line drive homer. Inside, it's ball one to Frank Bowling. Roy McMillan let off the last of the eighth inning with a single. Mac Jones hit a long home run to the opposite field, and Eddie Matthews followed with a long home run to right field. A line drive in the left center field, a base hit. Frank Bowling takes the turn. He's on with his second hit of the game. That brings up Dennis Menke. Menke playing third, has one hit and three times up. He got his base hit back in the second inning. Menke hitting at 2.03. Here's the pitch on the way, a swing and a miss strike one. It's all over at Connie Mack Stadium in Philadelphia. 28 hits in that game tonight, and the Cubs win the Slugfest 11 to 8. The winner in relief, Don Elston, and the loser in relief, Jack Balshan. Cubs had 11 runs on 15 hits. The Phillies, 8 runs on 13 hits. Now throw to first, and it's not in time. Throw to first. I just puts the ball on the runner, Frank Bowling, but not in time. Last of the eighth inning, Braves lead 5-2. to two. A pitch out, no throw made by Hobie Landry. One ball, one strike. Now Craig up in pitching position, throws over to first, and it's not in time. We have a correction on the Lions score of the Cub Philly game. The winning pitcher is Dick Ellsworth, not Don Elston. Another pitch out, nothing was going, two and one. Two balls and one strike on Dennis Menke, right handed batting third baseman. Pitch to him, outside and low, ball three, and now it's three and one. Warren Spahn is due up next. Braves surging in front on home runs by Mac Jones and Eddie Matthews. He holds up, but it's over. Strike called in the outside corner. Well, they're going into the ninth inning at Comiskey Park. All tied up. The Orioles four and the White Sox four. Chicago got a run on the home eighth inning to tie it up. The runner will be going, and a throw to first is not in time. Tough spot here for a base runner with a count three and two, two men down. He has to get all the lead he can and yet avoid being picked off. There he goes, and his foul hit down the third baseline. In the game tomorrow, Cecil Butler, the, the rookie right-hander who pitched very well in beating the Mets last Sunday, will be on the mound for the Braves. And Jay Hook. Winning pitcher in the Wednesday afternoon game against the Cubs with two strong innings of relief work will be on the mound for the New York Mets. Now bowling with his lead. He's on the run. A line drive hit hard, but it's fouled down the left field line. 
little too far out in front, and that one that was ripped goes foul by several yards deep down the line. So Frank Bowling has to retrace his steps, and the count stays at three and two on Dennis Menke. Outfield swung around toward left. A throw to first. He almost caught him leaning. Bowling getting back, and it's three and two on the hitter, Dennis Menke. Craig in pitching position. There goes the runner. Strike three called, and he knew it. Beauty of a curve by Roger Craig. His eighth strike out of the game. But Milwaukee in the eighth inning got three runs on four hits. No errors, one left on. And so at the end of eight, the score, the Milwaukee Braves five and the New York Mets two. Right here, let's pause for station identification. You are tuned to WGY, 10 on your radio dial, the General Electric Station, Schenectady. Bob Murphy with Lindsey Nelson and Ralph Kanter from Milwaukee. Looking at our scoreboard, the Cubs beat the Phillies 11-8 to as they hit five home runs in the game tonight. Loser, Balsh, and winner in relief, Dick Ellsworth. No score on the San Francisco-Houston game as yet. That'll be Johnson against Sanford. Bob Perkey won his seventh with a six-hitter as the Reds beat the Pirates 4-1. to Haddix the loser. The Cardinals scored two at Dodger Stadium on the West Coast in the first inning. Padres has been taken out, and Stan Williams has come on against Larry Jackson. In the American League, Harmon Killebrew's two-run homer in the seventh inning gave the Twins a 4-3 to win over the Yankees. They now have won 10 of their last 13. Lee the winner and Whitey Ford the loser. They're in the ninth inning at Chicago. Baltimore four and the White Sox four. Washington on a seven-hitter by Pete Burnside. Bested Kansas City at rookie Dan Fister three to two. Cleveland, as Dick Donovan won his seventh without a setback, and he also hit two home runs. Beat Detroit nine to two. And they're in the ninth inning at Fenway Park with the Los Angeles Angels leading the Boston Red Sox eight to four. You know, there's no time like the present, and what better way to use it than to pour yourself a tall, refreshing glass of Rheingold. Rheingold is beer as beer should taste. And dry tells you why. Gil Hodges up in the ninth inning, bluffs at a bunt, and takes it up high. One ball and no strikes. Warren Spahn trying to get his fourth win of the year and the 313th of his career. The classy left-hander winds and pitches. A high fly hit the right center field, not too deep. Gliding to his glove side is Henry Aaron, and he has it for the out. One away, nobody on now in the ninth, and the hitter will be Felix Mantilla. They're underway out in San Francisco now. No score. Houston nothing, and the Giants nothing at the end of one. Spawn winding. And the pitch to Mantilla hit hard, but it's fouled on the left field line. He went after a breaking pitch and lined it hard, but foul. The Mets have been held to three hits by Spahn tonight, two of the three home runs. Hit by Gil Hodges and by Frank Thomas. Warren Spahn, out of his windup, the pitch misses the inside edge. One ball and one strike. Next pitch to Mantilla. He runs up as if to bunt, then lays off of it. Two balls and a strike. Five runs on nine hits. The Mets two runs on three hits. Five home runs in this game. Now the 2-1 pitch. A little bit low. Felix watches it and the count goes to three and one. Gus Bell waiting on deck. Bell has hit in tough luck in the, tonight's ball game. Aaron went right up against the fence 402 feet away to pull in a long fly. 
And then he hit a hard line drive, but it was right at the second baseman, Frank Bowling. Pitching three and one. That's over a strike, three and two to Felix Mantilla. Felix has been hit by a pitch, fouled out to Joe Torrey, and hit the ball deep to left center that was caught by Howie Bedell in a fine play. Three, two delivery. Ground ball socked down to third, taken out of the dirt by Dennis Menke. Throws to Matthews in time, and there are two away. I think I said Eddie Matthews, beg your pardon, is Tommy Aaron now playing first for the Milwaukee Braves as a defensive move here in the ninth inning. Two outs, nobody on. Gus Bell, the batter now, as the Mets try and get it going here in the ninth off Warren Spahn. The left-handers wind up his pitch, a strike on the outside corner. Mac Jones broke a 2-2 deadlock in the home eighth inning with a two-run homer. A fly ball hit to center field. Not too deep. It may be the ball game. Hank Aaron is under it waiting, and he has it. The game is over. So Warren Spahn wins his fourth game of the year with a strong three-hitter, and the Braves take the opener of this four-game series by a score of 5-2. In the ninth inning, no runs, no hits, no errors, and none left on. We'll be back to check the line score of today tonight's game and a word about tomorrow's game in just a minute. Coming up now, a musical pitch with an interesting switch. This is Tito Rodriguez for Rheingold Extra Dry. Rheingold El Brindis Perfecto Para todos, familia y amigos De sabor sin igual La cerveza ideal in Spanish, it's Magnifica. In English, it's Great. In any language, it's Rheingold Extra Dry. Rheingold is brewed longer and slower for flavor that's clean, clear through. It's beer as beer should taste. Dry tells you why. My beer is Rheingold and dry beer. Think of Rheingold whenever you buy beer. It's not bitter, not sweet. It's the dry flavor treat. Won't you try extra dry Rheingold beer? Well, a long opposite field home run by right fielder Mac Jones broke up an outstanding pitching duel between Warren Spahn and Roger Craig. And the Milwaukee Braves, using the long ball to back up a great three-hitter by Warren Spahn, have taken the opener of this four-game series by a score of 5-2. to two. The game was tied 2-2 two to two coming into the last half of the eighth inning. In the home eighth inning, Roy McMillan led off with a single to center field. Mac Jones, who has a lot of power to the opposite field, came up and hit one high and deep toward the top of the left field bleachers to put the Braves in front 4-2. to two. And Eddie Matthews then put the frosting on the cake for the Milwaukee Braves when he homered deep to right field up toward the middle of the bleachers. In addition to the home runs hit by Mac Jones and Eddie Matthews, Henry Aaron had homered earlier in the game. For Aaron, number six. For Jones, number five. And for Matthews, number seven. For the New York Mets, two of their three hits in tonight's game off spawn were home runs. Gil Hodges hit his fifth of the year, a long drive to left center. And Frank Thomas tied the game at 2-2 in the fourth inning when he lined one over the fence in left field, not far from the foul pole, for his ninth of the year. But Warren Spahn on a three-hitter wins his fourth of the year against four losses. Losing pitcher Roger Craig, Roger pitching very well, has now won two while losing four. The line score, Milwaukee five runs on nine hits, two errors, and six left. For the New York Mets, two runs on three hits, three errors, and five left on. The paid attendance tonight in Milwaukee, 9,655. Tomorrow, it's rookie right-hander Cecil Butler who hurled a strong six-hitter in beating the Mets at the Polo Grounds 3-2 last Sunday. For the New York Mets, it will be Jay Hooked. Jay, in two innings of relief work, was the winner on Wednesday afternoon from the Chicago Cubs. And that wraps up another New York Mets game. We certainly hope you enjoyed it. Ryan Gold enjoyed bringing the game your way. 
Remember now, we'll be broadcasting from County Stadium in Milwaukee at 2.25 Eastern Daylight Time tomorrow afternoon.